Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see, what if Naruto was awakened with the dangerous power of Shinigami King. Here is short summary, Kazuki, Yorusihi, Kenpachi and Kukaku are given a second chance at life by the Shinigami King to help Naruto Namikaze reach his potential to fulfill the prophecy and gain a family he always wanted. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Zaraki Kenpachi, the strongest of the 13 court guard squads in Soul Society looked around the dark realm he found himself in, and wondered if this was the place where he went to when one died. He had just defeated the last of Aizen's Espada with the help of the noble prick of a Shinigami captain Bukuya Kuchiki but the damage done to Kenpachi was severe, and yet the man did not know the meaning of the words, give up. After that, the 11th division captain rose to fight once again with his target being Aizen. However, when that happened, the prick had used his new form to destroy Kenpachi, and the two had died with those close to him also dying while being sent here. Wherever here was anyway. Hey! Is there anybody here in this shithole? If you're here and you're strong then I want to fight, said Kenpachi as he had not intention of being, and doing nothing while the rest of the universe did its own thing without him. Well if this isn't a surprise, said a feminine voice behind the former captain of the 11th division and turned around to see her standing a few feet away. Kukaku Shiba. What the hell? What are you doing here Kukaku? Said Kenpachi, as he wondered how the Shiba clan head was here, and not in Rukongai district. I was killed. By Aizen's assassin squads said Kukaku, as she told him what Aizen did, and how the man had sent assassin squads throughout the different districts killing potentially strong people that could oppose him in the future. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I hope Aizen is barely alive, and gets the crap kicked out of him when he faces judgment, said Kenpachi, as he hated Aizen, and loved fighting while being alive. Now he couldn't do the latter because of death. You need not concern yourself with that now former members of the Gote 13 said a deep sinister voice with its spiritual pressure suffocating the two shinigami. Who said that? said Kukaku, as she drew her sword, and so did Kenpachi but caused them to drop when the pressure increased and forced them both to their knees. I did, said the demonic and ghostly being hovering above them with a crown of bones on its head. Who the hell are you? said Kenpachi, as he tried to stand, but didn't have the strength, and saw Kukaku was doing the same. Who am I? I am the shinigami king said the ghostly image above them became a tornado of power and changed a regal middle-aged man with blood-red eyes. This is the guy Aizen wanted to kill. Ha! Huh. Good luck with that dumbass. I almost wish Aizen was here to get his ass handed to him, thought Kenpachi, as he could tell right away this being made Aizen look like a pansy, and wipe the man out. Normally, I don't interfere in the affairs of the human world, the Shinigami world, and even Hueco Mundo though make no mistake with my power I could wipe out all the hollows there. I see more that goes on in all three worlds, than anyone else from each world, and I have been waiting for just the right individuals for a mission that if completed will clear each of your slates," said the Shinigami king, as he let up on the spiritual pressure, and let the two rise. What mission? said Kukaku, as she was curious about the mission, and from the Shinigami king himself that was saying it was important. In another place and time in another dimension of the human world there is a child that was burdened with holding a powerful demon by his own father. This demon was so powerful that the man, who was called the Hokage, of this village that he chose to summon me personally to seal it away, and asked his child to be seen as a hero. The boy was not, said the Shinigami king, as he showed them moments of the boy's life where he was attacked, hated by everyone around, and was shown little kindness with some of the people only betraying the young blonde in the end. Shit. Not even Aizen would go so far like these idiots, said Kenpachi, as he felt his anger rise within his body, and Kukaku could easily agree with him on that subject because she felt like using an explosive and keto spells on these fools. Yes. Because of my seal, the boy will be gifted with the power of the Shinigami, and one day have his own Zanpakuto. However, because of his years of abuse in the very beginning of his life, the child will also gain a hollow side, and will one day come out when the time is right. He will one day become what is known as a wizard. Not unlike the one called Kurosaki Ichigo that you yourself encountered on more than several occasions Kenpachi. Said the Shinigami king, as he saw the two look at him in surprise, 
and then back at an image of a lonely blue-eyed blonde boy wishing to be loved. So we go this world, meet the kid, and then train him to be a badass? Is that mission? Kenpachi asked, as he had an eyebrow raised, and ignored Kukaku walking towards the blown-up image of a depressed Naruto. You will not just train him. You will both raise him as if he were part of your own family, said the Shinigami king, which made both warriors look at him in shock, and then at each other with wide eyes. What? What the hell are you thinking with that line of thought? Said Kukaku, as she had nothing against Kenpachi personally aside from the whole Shinigami thing, but she didn't like him like that, and was pretty sure he didn't like her that way either. I agree. Why put both of us together for this? Since I am the stronger of the two of us just leave it to me and send this weakling into the abyss, said Kenpachi sharply while his eye narrowed at Kukaku looking at him with her usual anger. What did you say? said Kukaku looking ready to beat the snot out Kenpachi. You heard me. And don't get your impossibly large s in a twist about it since we both know it's true, said Kenpachi, as he grinned at her, and the woman was ready to use every form of explosive keto on the man right now. Enough. You two will not be the parental figures raising him. I have charged two others with that responsibility, said the Shinigami king, as he revealed one Shihoin Yoruichi, and Yurahara Kazuki smiling at the surprised pair. Hey Kukaku. I see you finally found a husband to settle down with, said Yoruichi, as she saw the woman now shooting fire out of her mouth, and acting more like a dragon than a woman. What did you say? yelled Kukaku, who tried to run over to Yoruichi, and tear the anamorphic former Shinigami captain a new hole had Kenpachi not held her back by her shirt with his massive hand with a bored expression on his face. Kazuki was rubbing the back of his head and sweat dropping at Kukaku's reaction. Yoruichi Chan must you work Kukaku Chan now of all times. The hat and clogs wearing man asks his best friend while the purple haired woman grinned, loving how she always made Kukaku lose her temper. You can kill Nako later. This mission comes first, and that Naruto kid needs saving, said Kenpachi, as he saw the blonde was currently in trouble and needed their help. Fine. We save the kid and kill my best friend later. Now let's go already, said Kukaku as she got a sweat drop from Yoruichi, and Kazuki seeing the interaction between the two. Can you imagine what their kids will be like if they settle down together? Kazuki asked and got a nod and shudder from Yoruichi who was now fearing for Naruto's sanity when around these two. Very well. I will send you there now. Before I do, you must know Shiba Kukaku that your lost arm will be returned to you, and to not blow it up a second time. And Kazuki said the Shinigami king seeing the woman look at him in surprise and then Kazuki looked up. Yes Shinigami-sama. The blonde man asks and watches the ruler of souls hold his hand out and in a flash of light a light purple orb appeared in his hand shocking the four. Th that's. He said pointing at his greatest yet feared invention that was the cause of the war against Aizen. Yes Kazuki this is the Hogyoku your greatest yet dangerous achievement. The king stated. B but how? Aizen infused himself with it. How did you? He stammers while the king snorts. You stupid genius I am a god, gaining something as minuscule as this is simple for someone of my caliber. Now then when you get the chance I want you to place this into the boy's soul. With it he'll be able activate his shinigami and hollow powers a lot faster and keep them balanced until he faces his inner hollow. It'll most likely do something to Kyubi, but what it'll do to the fox will be, interesting. This device will help Naruto in more ways than you think and he will without a doubt become a god amongst men. Do not mess this up Kazuki Urahara. He said in a strict and serious tone making the genius nod instantly as he took the orb and placed it in his pocket. Now I wish you all luck in this mission. Farwell. He says and in a flash of light they were gone. Konoha sometime later, Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto was running. Not surprising given it was his birthday and nights like this normally involved him running for his life from mobs of people wanting to hurt or kill him for something he had no idea about. It was unfair to the blonde that people hated him, called him names, and tried to destroy anything that kept the kid mentally sane. Why? Why are they doing this? Thought Naruto, as the mob got closer, and the injured boy was having a hard time dodging the various object thrown at him from the closing mass of people wanting his head on a pike. Get the demon yelled the leader of the mob holding a katana he had acquired and was seeking to kill the blonde they thought was the Kyubi reincarnated. Why do they call me that? I'm not a demon. Am I? 
thought Naruto before a rock hit him in the back of the head and he fell to the ground with the mob soon ready to pounce on their victim like a pack of rabid animals. This is for the Yandaimi, yelled the leader, as he was about to use the point of his sword to pierce the boy's unguarded defenseless back, but the blade was stopped by a large hand shocking and infuriating the mob wondering who would dare stop them from saving their home. Towering over them was a very tall and muscular man with a wild and aggressive appearance. He was wearing a black samurai shirt with matching hamakas, socks and sandals and a sleeveless haori with the kanji 11 in it which had a ragged look to it and his hair was spiked up with small bells at its tips and wears an eye patch that has a gold-like lining and had a chain as one of the straps. He has pronounced hairless eyebrow ridges and a huge scar running down the left side of his face. He was staring down at the bewildered and frightened mob members like they were bugs. Bugs that were going to be squashed. This is why I hate weaklings. They get together and pick on others who can't defend themselves thinking they're strong enough to take on anyone. It pisses me off and makes me want to puke," said Kenpachi, who snaps the katana in half like it was a stick with his bare hand, drew his sword, and cracked his neck in each side making the wielder back away in fear. That was when three others appeared. One was a tall light-skinned man with messy, light blonde colored, almost pale, hair and gray eyes that are usually shadowed by his hat. He wears traditional Japanese wooden sandals and a green and white bucket hat. He also wears dark green pants with matching dark green shirt and a dark grayish green coat, having large white diamond patterns along its bottom half. In his hand was a katana with an oval shaped cross guard and black hilt wrapping in a deep red sheath. The other was a dark skinned woman with golden colored eyes and long purple hair, which she keeps up in a ponytail. Her standard attire consists of a backless, black sleeveless undershirt. An orange overshirt with two white straps on each shoulder, a large beige sash around her waist, black stretch pants and long beige wrist warmers, secured by bands, and long beige leg warmers with brown light shoes. And the last one was a youthful looking woman of average height with long messy black hair she wore bandages over. She wears a white skirt and provocative red robe exposing her bosom. She also had a katana strapped to her right arm. They were Kazuki Urahara, Yoruichi Shihoin, and Kukaku Shiba. Ganging up on a little kid, eh? You bastards must be real proud of yourselves. Kukaku said in a sarcastic manner, causing the once scared mobsters to glare and scowl at her. That thing isn't a child, it's a demon in human skin, and it must be destroyed. Now move or we'll make you. A member said, thinking that their numbers would give them a chance against these demon lovers. Boy, are they in for a surprise. Kenpachi scowled at their stupidity and grabbed the man by his head and lifting him up like he waited nothing and then crushes his head like it was nothing, leaving a bloody smear in his hand while the body fell to the ground. The mob was now scared and started to back away in fear as the man made his way towards them. Now Kenpachi san, there is no need to be too bloodthirsty, and make a mess of things when. Dot uh, too late, said Kazuki, who was blocking the view with a fan he pulled out earlier and was ignored while the man from Zaraki district was upon the screaming mob in an instant slicing them to pieces with their blood spraying everywhere except on Naruto. Are you going to tell me I should let them go Kazuki? That? You saw what I did about the kid's abuse. The only way it will stop is if such people are dead and those that follow them see the boy's life is no longer theirs to destroy," said Kenpachi, as he saw Kukaku and Yoruichi look over Naruto with looks of horror on their faces. The boy was badly malnourished. You could make out his skeletal structure easily he was so thin. They sensed the Kyuubi's demonic energy leaving the seal and healing the boy, but it was strained in doing its job, and could only do so much before it had little to no effect in saving Naruto from certain death. This poor kid needs help, said Yoruichi, as she bent down and picked up the boy, and the now awakened child began to tremble and struggle in fear of being held since it only meant to prevent him from escaping further pain. P please don't hurt me. All I wanted was some food. I didn't do anything wrong. The little blonde pleaded not wanting to get hurt. Easy little one. We're not going to hurt you. Said Kazuki, as he saw the blonde look at him with disbelief, and the former 12th division captain got the distinct impression this wasn't the first time someone lied to the kid in this manner. He's telling you the truth Naru-chan. We came here to help you. Said Yoruichi, as she tried to soothe the troubled blonde, and hoped he believed their intentions were true. Are really? said Naruto, as he looked at the two, and then the others in front of him. Big guy bathed in blood kind of scared him. Yeah really. However, 
since we're new to your village, can you help point us to the direction of the hospital so we can get you healed, and a nice bed to sleep in? Kazuki asked, as he saw the boy shiver a little at the mention of the hospital, and it made the four around the boy silently seethe in anger at the child not finding sanctuary there where those injured get healed. I I'm not welcome at hospitals, said Naruto slightly scared to go there. Don't worry Naruto-kun. We'll make sure this time is different, said Yoruichi, as she held the child close to her body and letting him know she wasn't going to harm him. Naruto looked into her eyes and saw that they held no form of ill intent in them. He rests his head against her chest and points them in the general direction of where the hospital was. Let's take him to their hospital. If they give us any lip, we blow them all up and find someone who will heal the gaki," said Kukaku with the two former Shinigami heading to the hospital, as she saw Kenpachi grin at her, and felt heat rush through her face. I've never heard violence be expressed in such a why manner before, said Kenpachi, as he grinned at the blush rushing through Kukaku's face and it soon went from blush to being red in the face with anger. You baka. Shut up and move. I'd expect Kazuki to try and get in my panties like he does Yoruichi, but don't get any ideas with me, and your version of sweet talking. Said Kukaku pointing her finger at his chest. Dot his incredible and well-muscled chest that made the Shiba woman's beat red face. Sweet talk? Don't know the meaning of the words. If I wanted to screw you, I'd give it to ya hard and fast until you couldn't walk anymore in blissful satisfaction," said Kenpachi, as he saw Kukaku look at him with full face blush, and fish face mouth sputtering before she wisely decided to keep her tongue from helping her pronounce words since she didn't trust it right now. Or her actions. Konoha Hospital. Get that wretched thing out of here. Its kind is not welcomed in this hospital or the leaf," said the receptionist, as she glared daggers at the weak and barely conscious child before her and almost wished to stab the blonde with the pen she had in her hand. By this point, Kukaku had little patience with anyone standing in the way of the kid's health, and decided to make her presence known. Grabbing the Y woman by the throat, the Shiba woman pulled the other clothes, and let the rage she felt at the abuse being done to the boy be known through the spiritual pressure coming off of her. Making the female tremble in fear. Listen here you ing whore. If this kid isn't helped by a respectful doctor right now. I'm going to blow up every single person in this place that's had a hand in Naruto's abuse, and then I'm going to blow this place up so everyone in this shithole of a village doesn't have any place to recover from their injuries. Got it? said Kukaku, as she saw the now frightened woman to shake like the pre-verbal leaf, and nod her head quickly before being shoved by the Shiba woman into her chair. Within moments, one of the rare doctors and nurses not hostile to the blonde came to their aid, and began to assess Naruto's situation. Due to the malnutrition the boy was facing, they couldn't let Naruto leave here until his condition improved, which could be several weeks if given the proper regiment of nutrients, and that no one came to snuff the life out of the blonde in the process. No sooner had the doctor left to help the blonde with IV bags needed to help in his recovery did the Hokage himself appear with Anbu in full battle gear on each side of him. I am the Hokage and leader of this village. Just who are you? And why are you with Naruto? said the Sandame Hokage, as he saw the big guy with the weird hair practically covered in blood of villagers, and saw the other three not looking too pleased at seeing the leader of the leaf village. Us? Us? You have this kid being beaten, practically starved almost to death, and you're asking about us? Kukaku yelled as she was really pissed off right now, and made the Anbu around the Hokage reach for their weapons. Naruto's life is not your responsibility since you are not from here, said Serutobi as he sensed these four were incredibly strong, and the tall one seemed to be the strongest. Yeah well the job you've been doing so far with the gaki isn't exactly what I would call great right now Hokage-sama, said Yoruichi, as she glared at the old man, and eyed the anbu in the room with a calculating gaze. You must understand the village has suffered much with the loss of loved ones at this point of time on the anniversary of the Kayubi's attack and the boy explained the sandame before an intense pressure that the man had never felt before flooded the room. Kazuki had to use a shield made of energy to cover Naruto from it since the boy's condition would only worsen under the other former captain's power. Kenpachi was towering over the old leader and his anbu who were now trembling and almost buckling from the pressure this man released. When they looked into his eye they each visualized their death by his blade. Suffered? Old man. Your home is about to get wiped off the ing map in the next two seconds because of the crap this kid's been through," said Kenpachi, as he was reaching for his eye patch to remove it, and use his spiritual energy to wipe out this village in one shot. 
Unless, you can provide us the means to help Naruto recover, and have a proper place to stay after he gets out of the hospital. Said Kazuki, as he didn't want to do that to the leaf unless it was absolutely a last resort, and from what he saw of Naruto's past the kid had made a few friends that didn't deserve a painful death. I'll see what I can do. Until then, I'd like to leave my Anbu here to guard Naruto, and the four of you can come with me to discuss this further. Said the Sandame, as he saw the four narrow their eyes at him, and the old cage felt himself sweating under their gaze. Forget it you old coot. I'm staying here with the kid because frankly I don't trust you or you so-called guards. Said Kenpachi, as he sat down on a chair that was straining under his weight, and had his sword at the ready should someone try to come in that wasn't friendly. I must insist you all come. My Anbu are more than capable of protecting the boy. Said the Hokage, but the man's one-eyed gaze unnerved him, and wondered if this was Ibiki's distant relative. Old man, I've done a lot of fighting, killing, and protecting in my day. I know when someone is going to protect and when someone is going to kill. Your boys here in sissy little masks aren't going to protect Naruto while we're gone. I'd bet my eye patch they'd kill the boy within five minutes of us leaving this hospital and claim it was some crazy bullshit to get out of being punished. Either you talk to these three in your office or we leave this poor excuse of a village with the boy and take him somewhere else and if you think that these weaklings can stop you then you better get ready to have the morgue get ready to work overtime for the next few days. Said Kenpachi, as he sensed bloodlust coming from these fools around the Hokage, and if the old man couldn't sense it then he wasn't fit to leave this ing place. He's right. These guys are all out for blood and it's Naruto's blood they want. Thought Kukaku, as she scowled at the masked group around the Hokage, and sensed they were all feeling frustrated at the lost chance to kill Naruto and she had a Kido spell ready to kill these fools if they tried anything. Kazuki and I will go with you Hokage-sama. Kukaku and Kenpachi will stay here to watch over Naruto, said Yoruichi, as she knew that negotiations were not Kukaku's or Kenpachi's strong point. Their strong points involved protecting Naruto and hurting others through violence at this point in time. Very well, let's go, said the Sandame as he left with the Anbu and the two former Shinigami captains. Kukaku let out an angry sigh and looked at the now sleeping blonde wondering what kind of people would do this to an innocent kid. Her expression softened a little as she walked over to the kid's bed and knelt down and gently stroked his hair. Don't worry Gaki. No one's gonna lay a hand on you anymore. She says while Kenpachi grunts in agreement and had his sword planted on the ground, getting ready to kill whoever would try to harm the kid in the hospital. Hokage's office. Yoruichi and Kazuki were currently in the man's office standing before him with unhappy expressions on their faces. Yoruichi had her arms crossed over her chest while Kazuki had his head tilted down and his hands resting on his zanpakuto. It may not look like it but he was ready to kill a few of the Anbu who were releasing their own key on them but they shrugged it off as it, it didn't even exist. Hiruzen was frowning at their expression and was nervous from their gaze but was doing his best to keep up a front. Now can you tell me what you're doing with Naruto? He asks as he wanted to get some info on them. If you must know I am Yoruichi Shihoin and the man in the bucket hat is Kazuki Urahara. She stated while the man smirks and does a gesture with his hand. Now then before we even get into depth to what we're doing here you better start explaining why you're allowing a kid no older than seven be treated like he's the Kyubi when he's the one who's keeping the fox from raising this village to the ground. She asks in a pissed tone making Sarutobi flinch and have a look of fear on his face. H how do you know about his condition? He asks. Kisusk smiles and tilts his hat up. Simple old man, like you are a part of a higher authority that goes above even yours and frankly our leader cares about Naruto to the point of having a someone of our caliber watch over the kid since it's clear you're incapable of doing it yourself. Kazuki finished in a serious tone and not wanting to tell the man that it was the Shinigami king that sent them to help Naruto reach his full potential not only as a ninja but as a Shinigami as well. Serutobi had a look of guilt and shame on his face and looks at the table. You two must understand that I have done everything I could for the boy but, he tried to explain only to have his desk be sent flying to the side and into the wall and being reduced into piles of wood. He had a look of surprise on his face as he looked up at a pissed off Yoruichi whose eyes were now slitted and was ready to tear this man in half with her bare hands. You're lying. You have done nothing to help the boy you senile old fool. We know you don't really care about Naruto like you claim because if you did you wouldn't be keeping his heritage from him. She growled out. The so-called professor had a horrified look on his face. 
H. How do you know about that? It's a top secret in Konoha and only I and a few people know about it. He asked while his hands trembled at the fact that some outsiders knew about Naruto's family. Like I said earlier, we know from someone who's higher in the chain of command. Kazuki finished as he saw his best friend getting ready to rip this man to shreds. And I suggest you stop lying to my friend here if you want to live to see another day. Now what about his godparents the two loyal Sanin of Konoha? Why are they not here looking after the kid? Kazuki asks. Serutobi looked like he was gonna have a heart attack. They even knew who his godparents were. B because they have their shinobi duties and GHRRRGGGHH. He never got to finish because Yoruichi snatched him up by his collar and slammed him into the wall. You're lying to us again but I guess you're too stupid and ignorant to listen to someone who has your life in their grasp and can crush you without even trying. She says as she starts to slowly squeeze the man's throat while Kazuki just watched. He may be a goof and laid back at time but he knew better than to try to stop a pissed of Yoruichi. The last person who tried that ended up having their legs twisted into the form of a pretzel. Serutobi was struggling to get out of her grasp but her hand was like a vice grip. P please e everything I did was for the b-boy's sake. If word got out that he was the Yandaimi's son then Iwa would declare war on us for what he did during the last war. He explained but gurgled as she slowly squeezed the air out of him. Don't give us that bullshit you pathetic excuse of a human. You did the bare minimum and allow those villagers treat that poor kid like he was the devil incarnate. Well that stops here and now. You are going call his godparents back here and they are going to accept their responsibilities to Naruto, or else. She says and was very tempted to send this man on a one-way trip to the afterlife and be cast into the ninth level of hell by the Shinigami king. I can't. The boy's godfather is elusive due to maintaining his spy network for the village and his godmother swore never to come back here due to the painful memories of losing loved ones from the last war. Even if I could tell them something, they will not act on it and will not come back to Konoha," said the Sandame, as he saw the former captain of the 2nd Division of the Gote 13's eyes glow and she let out a dangerous hiss. Well then Hokage-sama you're gonna send them a letter telling them that they need to return to Konoha ASAP and say that it's not optional. Did they know Naruto is still alive or did you tell them that he died during the sealing along with his parents? She demanded and the man was silent for a while until Yoruichi slammed him into the wall again causing him to cry out in pain. I, I created a blood clone of the boy after Minato's sensei checked the seal and made it look like a dead body and told them he didn't survive. H his godparents were Tsunade and Jiraiya, he answered. And what about that growth stunt seal, restriction seal and dead man switch that was put on the back of his vertebrae and around his heart? From what I was told only the Yandaimi and Jiraiya were the only seal masters in this village and I know good and well that the boy's father wouldn't place those on his only son so who placed them on the boy? she demanded. They were placed there by me the council was demanding for the boy's death and make him into a weapon and to satisfy them I place the seals on personally to ensure he stays loyal to the village. He explained. Anger and rage were flashing in Yoruichi's eyes and white energy started to flare and cackle around her body like lightning. The entire office was trembling and slowly falling apart from the energy Yoruichi was releasing. The Anbu appeared and tried to stop her only for her energy to strike them and send them crashing into the wall and knocked unconscious. You mean to tell me that you placed those seals on him so that you could hinder his potential and kill him if he turns on the village? She asked in a dangerous tone and got a weak nod from the man. I'm going to kill you. She roared and reared her fist back at the frightened leader who was trembling in fear and was about to splatter his brains all over the wall until she felt her wrist being gripped. She turned her head to see Kazuki was the one to stop her attack had his hand around her wrist. Not here Yoruichi-chan, killing him would only make the situation worse. Please calm down, he said in a calm but cold tone but it wasn't towards her. She took a glance at his left arm and saw it twitching slightly knowing he was trying to refrain from killing this man also. Her Ryatsu died down and she let out a frustrated sigh. She nods and drops the man on his ass and he gasps for air and holding his neck in pain and trying to regain his composure from the overwhelming power he felt. Th that was unbelievable. Her power was on par with a bijou's. How can someone hold that much power in their body and not explode? He thought while recuperating on the ground. Kazuki leaned into Yoruichi's ear and starts to whisper. Yoruichi, 
I'm heading back to Naruto's room and preparing to place the Hogyoku in Naruto's body where the Shikifuan seal is. I don't know if it's at full power yet but hopefully it can make Naruto's recovery go faster and he can be up by tomorrow. He says getting a nod from her. Okay but wait for me to be there to help you with the process. We don't know how the fox will react to it. She states. Hi. I'll see you there in a few minutes. Hopefully Kenpachi hasn't caused another massacre in the hospital. He said in a joking manner while she chuckles. He then flash steps away while she walks towards the man and kneels down, grabs him by his collar once again, pulls him to her face and gives him a stone cold glare. You listen to me old man and you listen well because I am not gonna repeat myself. You're going to send those two a message. You're gonna. Tell them the truth about their grandson and you'll explain to them in that letter what his life has been like since the day he could walk and they need to be here to take care of him now and if you don't do this I'll head to the fire country capital and tell the fire daimyo what you have done since the Namikaze clan happened to be in good graces with the man and I'm pretty sure he won't be happy with you and the village treating the last surviving heir like garbage. She ordered getting a weak nod from the man and then shoves him back into the wall. He crumbles to the ground while she shunpos away to help Kazuki with the preparations. Sarutobi was wondering if this was his punishment from Kami for causing an innocent child to suffer a fate worse than death. Kazuki, Yoruichi, and Kukaku were standing around Naruto's sleeping form and placed a barrier around them while Kenpachi was leaning against the wall with his eyes closed. Kazuki was analyzing the Shiki Fuin and he couldn't help but be impressed with the design and the complexity of the seal. This is truly a work of art. I've never seen something so amazing. To think that a human is capable of creating something like this. He said with a grin on his face. I would have loved to meet the boy's father if he was still alive. Hopefully Naruto here has inherited his intelligence. He says while Kukaku's eye twitched. Hey Buckethead can you please get on with the process. I didn't create this barrier for my health you know. Kukaku says with a peeved expression on her face due to the fact that Yoruichi's former subordinate was going into geek mode while maintaining the barrier outside the room. Yoruichi who was in the lotus position with her eyes closed and glowing white was smirking. Please calm down Kaku-chan. You're not the one holding a double layered barrier in place with your own energy. We don't know how the Hogyoku will react to Naruto's body or the Kyubi so try not to lose focus. The goddess of Flash stated while her best friend grumbled. Oi Kazuki-kun, get out of geek mode and place the Hogyoku into Naru-chan. Kazuki chuckles sheepishly and nods. Sorry about that. Now then, the former captain of the 12th division placed his hand on the seal and it glows white. Kazuki pulls the Hogyoku out of his cert pocket and lets out a sigh. I hope I'm doing the right thing this time. I don't want a repeat of what happened in our world. Kazuki mumbled. He placed the Hogyoku on the glowing seal and the orb sank into it. The glow brightened and Kazuki watched as a cocoon made of white energy wrapped around Naruto's body. What's going on Kazuki? Yoruichi asks as she opened one eye. The Hogyoku seems to be, rejuvenating his body structure and awakening the power the king used to create the Shikifuan. I can sense his Ryatsu already awakening and purifying the Kyubi's yokai but at a slow pace. Kazuki says while the cocoon pulses. Six minutes later a few cracks appear on the cocoon and then more of them spread around until it shatters. And some of Naruto's spiritual energy flares around wildly but Kazuki creates a green barrier around Naruto's body and his spiritual energy goes back into his body. The glow fades around Naruto's body and to the four Shinigami's surprise, a hollow-like fox mask covered Naruto's face but then it cracks and shatters, revealing his face. Naruto's hair now stopped to his shoulders, like his father's, and the whisker marks on his face were now gone. His malnourished body was now healthy and showed none of his bones. It's done, Kazuki said and was impressed that the Hogyoku rejuvenated his body at a quick rate. Yoruichi and Kukaku dissolved the barriers and let out sighs of relief. Well that was fun, Yoruichi says and gets back on her feet and pops her back from sitting so long. Kenpachi had a smirk on his face when he saw Kukaku slightly panting. Tired already Kukaku-chan, and here I thought you were tough, he said with humor in his voice. Said female Shiba had a tick mark appear on her head. She turned around and was about to yell until Yoruichi stopped her by covering her mouth with her hand. Kenpachi please don't antagonize her, 
We don't need the boy waking up from one of her ramps and, she would said more until Kukuku bit down on her hand. A-A-A-H-H-H. Yoruichi cried as she pulled her hand back and nursed it. She then glared at a grinning Kukuku and started to yell. Kukuku you I'm gonna. She suddenly paused and covered her mouth and turned around slowly hoping that she didn't wake the boy up. She then sweat dropped when she saw an orange dome surround Naruto's sleeping form. Kazuki had an amused look on his face but his smile was covered by a fan. Now Yoruichi chan you should use your indoor voice. We don't want to wake up the other patients now do we? He asks with humor in his voice until Yoruichi's fist met his face and he was on the ground comically sobbing and clutching his face while her fist was steaming. Wow. And I thought you had a short temper Kukaku. Kenpachi stated while she nods. After that little scene Kazuki was back up with no form of injury on his face. I have to say I'm impressed that the Hogyoku healed him so quickly. Did any of you sense the fox's yokai emit from the boy's body? Kazuki asks while they shook their heads. It's possible that the Hogyoku absorbed the fox and is slowly purifying its energy. A hollow mask appeared on his face also but then dissolved. He said with a serious look on his face. Kenpachi raised an eyebrow at this and spoke up. So the kid will become a wizard? The warrior asks knowing that the power of a wizard was nothing to scoff at. Either that or he'll become a complete hybrid like Ichigo did when he fought and beat Aizen. The genius answered. Konoha several days later, Sarutobi managed to get the letters done and had both Taka and Nako go and look for the two Sanin. After he had his unconscious bodyguards sent to the hospital and his office redecorated Sarutobi slowly made his way towards the hospital with a frown on his face. When he entered the place he headed towards the room Naruto was in and couldn't help but wonder how his two students would react to him. He thought that what he did was for the good of the village and for Naruto's safety and that Minato would have wanted this. He hid his inheritance from the boy due to the fact that Iwa would come after his head. Lying to his godparents was what he thought was the best course of action because he knew that Tsunade and Jiraiya would have taken him out of the village and he couldn't allow that. He found the room Naruto was in and slowly opened the door. When he slowly opened it, a look of dread appeared on his face when he saw two people glaring down at him with hate and betrayal in their eyes. They were Tsunade Senju and Jiraiya the Toad Sage and they were pissed. Kenpachi and Kukaku were leaning against the wall smirking at the man while Yoruichi was sitting on the bed with Naruto in her lap. Said Blonde was snuggled up and sleeping peacefully in her arms while she gently stroked his hair and Kazuki had his hat tilted down while sitting in a chair. Hello Sensei. The three of us need to have a little talk, Tsunade says while cracking her knuckles. A bead of sweat was dripping down his face while Jiraiya's right index finger twitched and was tempted to just punch the man right in the jaw. Kazuki snapped his fingers and Yuchi and Naruto were surrounded by a green soundproof barrier. Flashback. Tsunade and Jiraiya were running full speed towards Konoha and they were pissed beyond belief. Tsunade-sama. Jiraiya-sama. Please slow down. I can barely keep up with you too. Shizun yelled out while Tun Tun squealed out in agreement. They didn't hear her though because they were too busy thinking about killing their sensei and half of the village. Damn that Serutobi. That ing piece of old monkey shit. When I get my hands on that bastard I'm grind his bones into dust. A woman yelled angrily as she, with her other two traveling companions traveled at ninja speeds through the trees trying to reach their destination. Now Haim. You should really calm down a little or you're going to give yourself an ulcer. The only male of the group joked with a smirk on his face, hopefully trying to lighten the tension with a little humor. His consideration only did nothing but made him had to dodge a chakra enhanced punch and nearly got his head knocked off his shoulders. Had he not been a veteran ninja with years of experiencing sneak attacks, sudden movements, and used to his female teammates' temper, he would need some serious medical attention. Why the should I calm down when my godson has been alive and alone for over seven years and I'm just finding out yesterday? She yelled at her teammate. Well disfiguring my skull won't help the situation now would it and did you forget he was my godson as well? I promise Minato and Kashina should anything happen to him I'd be there for him damn it. Jiraiya argued. True but it will make me feel better and get in some good practice before I go back to Konoha and beat the shit out of that old monkey. Retorted Tsunade. It had been this way since the two Sanin met up. While Jiraiya was more clam and reserved about the situation after hours and hours of meditating, speaking with the elder toads, and sparing with a few of the battle toads to subside his anger, 
Tsunade did no such thing and was literally a walking nuclear warhead that was on a mission to go to Konoha and raise it to the ground. Her grandfather building that village be damned. To her it was a constant reminder of all she lost. Grandfather Hasirama, Great Uncle Toborama, Dan, Nawaki, Minato, Kashina, and finally, Naruto. Her anger and hatred intensified as the last name appeared in her mind. The villagers, Council and Sarutobi will pay dearly for what they did to her, him, and most importantly to her family. As they made it to the main gates Jiraiya and Shizune were out of breath while Tsunade was still hopping mad. Tease Tsunade sama si can we please catch our breath we're very tired. Shizune stated while Jiraiya nodded in agreement. Yaheim let us rest for a few minutes I'm not as young as I used to be. Jiraiya screams out as Tsunade grabs him by the back of his collar and hoists him over her shoulder. Shizun eeps when Tsunade wraps an arm around her waist and carries her under her arm and takes off like a rocket into the main gate making Guy's speed look like a joke. A blonde blur was seen running through the village and the villagers had very little time to get out of the way as the angry Senju plowed her way through the village like a bulldozer. Kyaaaa, Tsunade-sama please slow down. Shizun screamed as she held on to a squealing tun tun for dear life while Jiraiya was flailing his arms and legs around crying for his mommy and tun tun was squealing like crazy. Shizun saw a large cart filled with fruit in Tsunade's path and she screamed. Tsunade sama the cart. The brunette screamed as she saw her mentor about to hit it. Jiraiya looked over his shoulder and his eyes bugged out. Mumi why why why? Jiraiya screamed out but Tsunade leaps over it but jumped to high in the air. She then lands on her feet hard causing a small earthquake and runs towards the hospital. Shizun was on her knees bawling her eyes out and clutching onto a purple-colored tun-tun while Jiraiya had swirls in his eyes. When she approached the hospital she drops a quivering and babbling Shizun and tun-tun and Jiraiya who fell flat on his face groaning while she kicks the doors open, knocking them off their hinges which caused the doctors and patients in the hospital to freak out and tremble when they saw the dark and angered form of a woman who could reduce a building to rubble with AF of her wrist. That woman was Tsunade Senju. She slowly made her way to the receptionist's counter and every step she took left imprints of her heels on the cracked floor and the female receptionist was whimpering in fear. As Tsunade approached the desk slammed her hands on the table making the woman eek as the female Senju leaned close to the receptionist's face and the murderous look on her face showed that she wasn't in the mood for any bullshit. Which room is Naruto Uzumaki in? She asked in a low yet dangerous tone while the receptionist held a shaking finger up and pointed it at the left. G go down the hallway, up the second floor and it's the third door to your right. She stammered out. Tsunade removed her hands from the desk and made her way up the stairs causing tremors with her feet. Jiraiya staggered to the desk gasping and panting before the receptionist and holding a finger up looking like he wanted to ask a question but she just pointed to the stairs Tsunade went up and the man nods and makes his way up the stairs as well. Tsunade had just found the second door and made her way towards it. When she did, she forced the door open but before she had the chance to look around a flash of silver made its way towards her head and thanks to her years as a war veteran, she ducked and rolled away while the flash took a few strands of hair off of her head and hit the wall. She saw a blade was embedded to the side of the wall and looked up to see a giant of a man who was wearing an eye patch on his right eye and wore an outfit that looked similar to a samurai's look down at her with a scowl on his face. Hey! What the hell's the matter with you? You almost took my head off. She cried while getting back up but then she felt the sharp end of a blade pressed against her throat courtesy to Kukaku. Don't move or I'll finish you off myself. She said in a dangerous tone which made Tsunade freeze instantly when her Zanpakudo pressed even closer to her throat. The Sanin then saw two other individuals in the room. One was blonde and wore a green and white striped bucket hat on his head and the other was female with a dark skin complexion, bright yellow colored eyes and long silky purple hair that was tied into a ponytail and she apparently holding the sleeping form of Naruto, her godson in her arms. Who are you and why did you just barge in here? If you lie to us then consider yourself worm food. The Shiba heiress said dangerously. W wait, I didn't come here to harm the boy. She reasoned while they eyed her carefully. And why should we believe you? Kukaku asks the busty blonde. Because I'm his godmother, Tsunade Senju. She answered. Kazuki tilted his hat up and saw a white-haired man stagger in the room panting and before he could say anything a large hand wrapped around his face and lifted him up slowly. And who is this guy? 
Kenpachi asks while Jiraiya struggled to pry the man's hand off his face but Kenpachi had a vice-like grip around the toad sage's head. That's my teammate Jiraiya, he's the boy's godfather, she answered while Kazuki shifted his gaze on the two and saw no form of deception in their eyes. He pulled out a fan and started to wave it across his face, it's alright you two, they're telling the truth, Kazuki said in his jovial voice and Yoruichi smiles and nods. The crazy duo were skeptic for a while but then released them. Tsunade gently rubbed her neck while Jiraiya rubbed his face. Kami I thought my skull was gonna get crushed. Who are you for anyway? Jiraiya asks. I'm Kazuki Urahara at your service. Kazuki said tilting his hat up and places it down. The mountain of muscle with the eye patch is Kenpachi Zaraki. Kenpachi makes a gruff sound while sheathing his blade. The woman with the crazy gleam in her eye is Kukaku Shiba. Kukaku grins with both of her hands on her hips. And last but not least my best friend and fastest woman to ever walk the earth Yoruichi Shihoin. He said while said flash goddess waved at them. You two must be the Sandame's former students and two of the Densetsu no Sanin, Jiraiya the Toad Sage and Tsunade Senju the Slug Princess who was also the granddaughter and granduncle of the Shodime and Nadaime Hokage correct? Yoruichi asks which made their eyes widen. And how do you know this? Tsunade asks since neither she nor Jiraiya haven't seen them before. The four look at each other and nod. I guess it wouldn't hurt to tell them what we really are. Kukaku states which confuses the two war veterans. So for the next few hours Kazuki explained to Naruto's godparents how the four of them used to live in a dimension where Shinigami kept the balance of the spirit and mortal realm intact and how a rogue Shinigami named Aizen betrayed them and used an item Kazuki created called the Hogyoku in order to kill the Shinigami king. They also explained how they participated in a war with the other Shinigami against Aizen and how they each lost their life defeating the madman. That was when the Shinigami king approached them and gave them a chance to redeem themselves by having them act as Naruto's guardians and trained him in the Shinigami powers he gained from the seal that was endowed with the king of souls powers due to the fact that Minato summoned said god of death in order to seal Kyubi away into his son. To say that Tsunade and Jiraiya were shocked and stumped was an understatement. So you four are Shinigami who were sent here by the Shinigami, King, to raise and train Naruto in using the powers he gained from the Shikifu and Wright. Jiraiya asks and they each nod. Not only that but Naruto is now in a sense part Shinigami and his powers and abilities are also a bloodline that'll be passed down to any kids he may have in the future. Again they nod. Jiraiya scratches his head for a few seconds and shrugs. Ma I believe ya, he said nonchalantly while Tsunade gave him a look that said, are you crazy? Don't give me that look Haim. Even though these guys aren't shinobi they are strong. Scratch that they make the biju look like cute animals. He states. Plus you got to remember Haim that your grandfather was capable of creating an entire forest with just his chakra alone and your granduncle could pull water out of thin air. And let's not forget about you and your titan-like strength and Minato's ability to wipe out an entire army in the blink of an eye and also took on the most powerful of the biju. He said while the last Senju pondered at this and couldn't help but admit that Jiraiya was right. I guess you're right, for once. She replied and the super pervert's shoulders slumped and mumbled something about how cruel she was to him but the regained his posture. I said in my letter that the Gaki had a growth stunt seal, restriction seal and a dead man's switch placed on his body right. Jiraiya asked and his answer was Kazuki frowning and nodding. Do you mind if I take a look at them? I'm the only shinobi in the village that has a vast amount of knowledge in fuinjutsu aside from my late student and more than likely the only one who can correctly remove them. Jiraiya quoted since fuinjutsu was a very complex and dangerous art and one wrong assimilation for any seal can meet with tragic consequences. Very well. Yoruichi place Naruto down on the bed please. Kazuki asks. Yoruichi looks at Jiraiya for a few minutes but sighs and sets him down. Jiraiya approaches Naruto and notices the dead man switch seal that's over the area where his heart would be. He then carefully turns Naruto's head around and finds a growth stunting seal placed near his vertebrae and restriction seal placed around the area where his chakra coils grew and expanded. Jiraiya couldn't believe that his sensei would go so far as to do this to Minato's kid. Lying to him and Tsunade was one thing but to destroy his chances of becoming a powerful shinobi like his parents was beyond disgusting. Right now he was tempted to go over to the tower and shove a Rasengan down his sensei's throat but decided to save that for later. 
Now to get rid of these. He said and pulls out an ink brush and ink bottle and starts to put removal seals around the growth stunt seal, restriction seal, and dead man's seal. He waits for the ink to dry and places his hand in a ram seal. Kai, he says and the removal seals blow while the others hiss and start to sizzle away until they were no more. Good, they're gone. Now all I have to do is check and make sure there are no other seals on the kid's body. He said and did an inspect in Naruto's body to make sure he didn't have any hidden or extra seals on his being. After searching his body for about 10 minutes he stops and smirks. No more seals. The gaki's clean. He assured them and then gives the boy back to Yoruichi and Kazuki speaks up. So that you all know the kid's life in this village was how do you say? Hell on earth. And the old man is the reason for it and telling by the pissed off expressions on your faces and the letters he sent you to you already know. He stated while the two especially Tsunade. So you two hold no resentment for Naruto holding the Kayubi in his very being. Yoruichi asked. Hell no. Unlike these Bakas I know the difference between the prisoner and the jailer and would have cared for him like a mother does her child. Had I known that my bastard of sensei lied to me and found out that he was alive I would taken him outside of this hellhole and trained him until he was fully grown and able to take on an army of cages, villages wants be damned. She said in a tone that meant she was serious. Kazuki then turned his attention towards Jiraiya. And you Jiraiya-san? He asks the Gama Senen. Like Tsunade Haimai too would have taken care of him and made the Gaki even stronger than his old man was and no one not even my so-called sensei would stop me. He said in a serious tone while Kazuki smirked. Speaking of sensei, where the hell is that old bastard because I'm gonna make an example out of him by giving him the same beating I gave Jiraiya when he peeked on me when we were younger only it's gonna be ten times more painful. She said cracking her knuckles while Jiraiya paled and shivered at the thought. Oh Kami if I wasn't pissed at the old monkey right nose I'd feel slightly sorry for him. The sage states which made Yoruichi curious. It was that bad, she asked the man. It was the closest life and death experience I've ever had in my shinobi career. He stated which got wide eyes from Kazuki and Kenpachi and grins from Yoruichi and Kukaku. That was when Naruto stirred and opened his eyes getting everyone's attention. Yoruichi looks down at the boy she had in her arms and smiled. Hey there Naru-chan how do you feel? A little better but who are they? Naruto asks Yoruichi. These two Gaki are your godparents and they were supposed to take care of you but a certain old man lied to them and told them you died during the Kyubi attack. They were also really close to your parents and vowed if anything happened to you they'd be there for you. Kukaku explained. Tsunade slowly approached a stunned Naruto and knelt down so that her face was leveled with his. Hello Naruto I'm Tsunade Senju your godmother and the man with the white spiky hair is your godfather Jiraiya. We were close friends of your parents. She said with a sad smile on her face while Jiraiya nods. Naruto snaps out of his stupor and realized that they knew who his parents were but was confused because Hiruzen told him that he was an orphan the Yandaimi picked. Why you knew my parents? But Saru Oji said I was an orphan and didn't know who my parents were. Naruto said which caused the two to frown especially Jiraiya. I'm afraid he's been lying to you Naruto. You had parents and they loved you more than anything. They were Kashina Uzumaki and your father was Minato Namikaze the Yandaimi Hokage. She answered and Naruto's eyes widened especially when he learned that he was the son of his idol and that was when Jiraiya spoke up. Naruto your father used you to be the vessel for the Kayubi and it wasn't because you were the only child born on that day. Your father chose you to be its vessel because he wouldn't stoop so low as to have another parent sacrifice their child. He was an honorable and noble man and it broke his and your mother's heart that they'd have to leave you. Jiraiya explained. And we're sorry that we were caught up in our own grief and leaving you under the mercy of these bastards Naruto-chan. Tsunade said looking at the ground in shame while Jiraiya placed a hand on her shoulder. Tsunade saw tear drops fall on the floor and looked up to see Naruto sobbing silently. S so you don't hate me for containing Kayubi? He asked hoping that these people weren't like the villagers. Tsunade's answer was a loving smile. Naruto-chan I would never think of raising my hand against you and I don't care if you contain the fox inside of you. I swear I would never harm you in any way shape or form and I'll protect you no matter what. She assured the blonde while Jiraiya smiled and nodded his head in agreement. 
The next thing Tsunade knew was that Naruto leapt off Yoruichi's lap and wrapped his arms around her neck and crying happily surprising the female Sanin but she also smiled and hugged her godson back. Afterwards Naruto fell asleep from exhaustion and Tsunade gently handed to boy back to Yoruichi. So you four are gonna be his foster parents right? Tsunade asked the four Shinigami who smirk and nod. Yes but Yoruichi and I will be his parents and Kukuku-chan and Kenpachi-san will be his aunt and uncle. He said waving the fan he had. His crazy aunt and uncle. He said silently only to be knocked upside the head with a paper fan and a lump formed on his head courtesy of Kukuku while smirks. Tsunade and Jiraiya on the other hand sweat drop at the action. Something tells me that you and her will get along fine Tsunade Haim. Jiraiya stated while the woman smirked until he said something that set them both off. Not only are you both short-tempered but you both have the same size. He said with a perverted grin in his face. The next thing he knew he was kissing the ground due to the fact that the two big ed women gave him a double brain duster to the head. Now it was time for Kazuki to sweat drop while Yorichi snickered and shifted her arms a little in order to make Naruto more comfortable. After that little scene the six adults talked about what they did in their lives for a while until they turned their attention to the door opening slowly and Tsunade and Jiraiya both had murderous looks on their faces due to the fact that the chakra signature was familiar to them. Speak of the devil, Tsunade said in a murderous tone. Flashback ends. Serutobi didn't know what was worse. The fact that his two students were giving him a murderous look that would make even Orochimaru piss himself or the fact that they were wanting to beat him into a bloody pulp. Tease Tsunade, J. Jiraiya I, I didn't expect to see you two here so soon. He stammered and their glares increased to the point where if looks could kill then he'd be dead right now. Cut the bullshit you traitorous dog. Tsunade growled out and slowly cracked her knuckles. You'd better give us a good reason why we shouldn't kill you where you stand and afterwards level the village to the ground with our summons because right now I'm tempted to finish what Kayubi started sensei. Jiraiya said while his hair sharpened to the point to where they looked like needles. Serutobi in the other hand paled at the thought. Please you two must understand. I did what I had to in order to appease the masses, Hiruzen tried to explain only to find himself being slammed into the wall hard by a pissed off Tsunade who had her hand wrapped around his throat and was ready to snap it in two. Appease the masses, what you did is condemn an innocent child to a life of hell. She yelled in his face. And not just any ordinary child but Minato's and Kashina's son and my godson you son of a. I had no choice Tsunade. I had to choose between Naruto and the safety of the village and I chose the village over Naruto's well-being. We were weakened and any of the other villages would have taken the opportunity to wipe us out. Since Naruto was the vessel for the most powerful biju in the world I couldn't allow you or Jiraiya to take him out of the village. Your grandfather and uncle would have done the same thing if they were in my PLA guu ah. Hiruzen suddenly found himself vomiting up blood and collapsing on the floor. He turned over to get up but found Tsunade slamming her foot in his chest and slowly crushing it. Don't you ever say that my grandfather and uncle would do the same thing or I'll crush you like the bug you are. She snarled out making the man struggle for air. You are nothing but trash Hiruzen Serutobi and a disgrace to your clan and unfit to lead this village any longer. She said and she and Jiraiya saw the man shrivel up and were disgusted at how weak and frail he looked now. Who is going to take my place Tsunade? You, as I recall, this place brings back bad memories, and believed that the whole idea of being Hokage was a foolish ambition, said the Sandame, as he knew how Tsunade lost her loved ones to the title when they desired to have it and even now saw pain in the eyes of his former student. I may not be the perfect choice for Hokage like Minato, but I know I'd be a far better one than you are right now and if becoming Hokage means I can use my power to protect my godson from the Bakas that you allowed to turn my family's legacy into a shell of its former self, then I guess I'm your new successor, said Tsunade with a smile on her face while Jiraiya looked at her in shock but then smiled that she would be upholding her family's title. It was time a Senju once more became Hokage. Hokage Tower meeting ROOM four days later. What is the meaning of this? Why did the Sandame summoning us to a meeting now? Asked Fugaku Uchiha because he was called into an early morning meeting with the clan heads, and two councils to an emergency meeting by the Hokage. Watch it Fugaku. When the Hokage chooses to have an emergency meeting with us for something important to the villages at his discretion, not yours.
said Shibi Abarame who had for some reason sensed growing hostility between the Hokage and the Uchiha clan throughout the years while said man scoffed. That's not the point, he should make meetings that do not conflict with a clan head's schedule and I am a busy man unlike most of you, said Fugaku, as he sat down in his chair, and saw the others around him do the same but glare at him for his ignorance. Is that so Fugaku? Tsunade asked as she turned around in the Hokage's chair to reveal herself to them all, and they were all clearly shocked to see her. Tsunade, when did you get back? What are you doing here at this meeting? And why are you in the Hokage's chair? said a shocked Homura, as he was not expecting this, and it was clear that no one else did too. The answers are in order the questions were asked. I got back a few days ago in secret due to a message sent to me by the Sandame about something important and as for me being here at this meeting, that was when a scary smile formed on her face which made them all nervous. I was the one that had asked for it, and as for being in the Hokage's chair, do I really need to spell it out for everyone? Said Tsunade, as she saw the civilian and elder council go pale, the clan head's eyes to bulge from their sockets, Donzo's face to turn red, and Fugaku was furious. This is an outrage, I will not stand for this, said Uchiha Fugaku with his Sharingan activated and he was not about to live in this village where another Senju ruled over the village like they had during his ancestor Uchiha Madara's time. Oh and what are you gonna do about it little man, said a powerful and masculine voice. Fugaku turned around only to see a giant of a man staring down at him like a spider does a fly before killing said bug. For some reason Fugaku felt fear in his body. W.H. Who are you? Fugaku asked, demanded with a little bit of fear in his voice. Kenpachi on the other hand scowled at how this weakling is trying to intimidate him. Your executioner if you don't sit your sorry ass down. He threatened which pissed Fugaku off. How dare you? I am an Uchiha and a weakling like you is not match for me. I am a god amongst men and you will show me some respect or all. He would have ranted on but was decapitated by a flash of silver and the now dead Uchiha's head rolled to the ground while the body dropped like a stone. Kenpachi then used his foot to crush Fugaku's severed head making blood, brain matter, and pieces of skull fly in different directions. Respect that you piece of shit, Kenpachi said to the smeared head. Tsunade just waved the scene off while the council member looked at Kenpachi Zaraki fearfully. Now then I have something I need to discuss with you fools so shut up or you'll be next to join that fool in the afterlife. Tsunade said in a serious tone while Kenpachi grinned dangerously at the council member. Now unlike the clan heads minus a dead Uchiha, who honor the dying wish of their leader, nearly all of you have abused your powers and have been destroying the village my family created from the inside out. Do you know why I left in the first place? I left because I thought I lost my godson after the Kayubi was sealed away by Minato, but it turns out that Jiraiya and I were lied to by my old sensei the Sandame. When we came back, we learned the truth from some friends of ours and I've decided to become Hokage in order to protect my godson from future harm by Yubakas here along with those outside this room. Said Tsunade, as she saw many of them go pale, and the clan heads were wondering who her godson was. If I may ask Tsunade-sama, but who is your godson, and why would a man of the Sandame stature do that to you? Shibi asked since he found no logic in betraying Tsunade like that and wondered if the Sandame had lost his mind before coming out of retirement. My godson's name is Uzumaki Naruto, said Tsunade, as she saw the councils erupt in anger at the mention of the boy, demanding his blood, and also denouncing the child as anything except a demon. What madness is this? Uzumaki Naruto is your godson. I won't accept it, said Kaharu in anger, as she wanted the boy killed, or forced into submission like the Sandame told her he would do on his terms. They would have ranted on but Kenpachi slammed his blade onto the table in releasing murderous intent on the now frightened council member. The clan heads on the other hand were trying not collapse from the pressure they were feeling while Tsunade seemed to be unaffected since most of it wasn't directed towards her. Shut the hell up right now or consider yourselves maggot food. Kenpachi roared flaring his spirit energy. After he stopped Tsunade spoke up once again. Now before any of you get any ideas in trying to harm Naruto let me inform you that Jiraiya is in the village and will be using his network to stop anyone from harming his godson. She said glaring at the pissed elders and civilian council. Also I would like for you to meet his new family. She said and snapped her fingers. That was when Kazuki, 
Kukaku, and Yoruichi appeared but the flash goddess appeared to have bloodstains on her shirt and she wasn't happy. Which one of you fools is Danzo Shimura? She asked in a calm yet dangerous tone. Said Warhawk opened his single eye and glared at her. I am what's it to you woman? He asked with a sneer on his face and before he knew it Yoruichi shoved her hand into his chest cavity and in the location of where his heart would be. She rips his black beating heart out and crushes it with her bare hands killing the man who remained there with a shocked look on his face but then his eye rolls to the back of his head and falls over. I just wanted to kill the man who had his drones come after my adopted son. She said and wipes the blood and grim off her hands. And another one bites the dust. Good riddance. Tsunade thought and coughed to get everyone's attention. There is also one more thing you should know. I'm raising the punishment level on those that have broken the Sandames law about the Kyubi and I know people have. Even as we speak, I'm having all of the financial records seized from every store Naruto was hardly allowed in for food, clothing, etc. All the stores that ripped him off in terms of prices will be charged and taxed heavily and every store that has kicked him out will be closed and will stay that way until I say so. She said and when she heard the civilians and the elders start to protest she flooded the entire room with key. And if there is any mention of the fox by the people in any way by using names like, Demon Boy, Monster, Fox Brat, and anything else that is connected towards the Kyubi inside of Naruto they will be arrested by the Anbu, have everything they own taken, and after being interrogated they will be executed and there will be no exceptions. Tsunade finalized, as she saw those against Naruto fumed but shut it up this while each of the clan heads, minus the late Uchiha Fubkao and Danzo Shimura of course were all looking on were pleased by this, and glad this Hokage wasn't giving any slack to these idiots. You enter in my house and what I say goes. If you don't like how I run things then pack your things and get the hell out and if you so much as even get an ill thought to harm my godson or hire anyone to do so I will kill them personally as well as the antagonist. I also sent a notice to the daimyo about Konoha's actions against my godson and he is not happy at all. He gave me permission to remove anyone off this council so please try something so that I can take away all that you and your family have gained. She finished making the council members that were against Naruto pale and now that two of their aides were dead they could do nothing or else they'd face absolute destruction. A nine-year-old Naruto was currently in the backyard of his biological father's estates practicing his word katas with a bakken. After the meeting a year ago Jiraiya escorted the four Shinigami and Naruto to Minato's clan compound which was located around a dense and beautiful forest near the Hokage mountain since he was the only one who could deactivate the security seals and barrier around the compound. After unlocking it they settled in and decided to start training Naruto in the Shinigami arts once he was fully rested. Kazuki started to help Naruto with his academics by teaching him math, science, history, and geography and how to conjure up plans and analyze his opponent's moves. Yoruichi started off by teaching him how to control his Ryutsu, spirit energy, properly as well as Hakudo and Hoho and also taught him how to use stealth, his senses, and throwing weapons and how to use the environment to his advantage. Kukaku started to teach Naruto the basics of Kido and how to use them correctly so that he didn't end up wasting energy or blowing himself up. Kenpachi had Naruto do body conditioning exercises such as push-ups, sit-up, running, and other exercises and started to tech him zanjutsu, having him start off with learning kendo. During his training Tsunade found out that most of the teachers in the academy have been stunting his growth by kicking him out of classes as well as had him answering questions no other student could answer and she had them fired, stripped of their rank, and sent to Ibiki and also had the Anbu that were supposed to be guarding him sent to the chopping block and their names tarnished. Jiraiya had to analyze his chakra levels and was shocked that he already had chakra levels that were high chunin to low junin level and all he was lacking was how to control it right so he helped his grandson out by teaching him chakra control exercises like tree walking and water walking. He also taught Naruto the cage bunch and jutsu, shadow clones, since he couldn't do low level jutsu even if his control improved in Naruto's chakra level and control improved by teaching him a few C and B class jutsu he knew. He also had Naruto sign the toad contract but had him wait until his chakra control improved before he tried to summon a toad. So from that day on Naruto has been working to improve his skills. After practicing for a few minutes he stops and wipes the bead of sweat off his head. So how was that Uncle Kenpachi? Naruto asked the man who was watching from under a tree. Not bad Gaki, 
If you keep practicing the kendo cat is like you're doing now you'll more than likely master it in a few years. He said with a smirk on his face. While he didn't use kendo a lot due to the fact that it kept both his hands bound he had to admit that it was a powerful style to learn and if mastered to a certain point said person can become deadly in using it. One example was when he used it against the fifth Espada Enenwatra Gilga when he was in his released state. One swing in the high level hollow was down for the count. Naruto rubbed the back of his head and smiled. Thanks though it'll be a while before I'm as good as you, he stated while the man scoffed. Kid I don't want you to become as good as me I want you to surpass me. He stated, now head inside and get yourself cleaned up your ka san wants to take you to the park. He stated while the boy nods and shun pose into the complex. After doing that Naruto left out of his room wearing a white short sleeve t-shirt with blue flames in the edges of his shirt and sleeves and had a leaf symbol on the front and the kanji fire on the back. He also wore blue cargo shorts that stopped below his knees and wore black ninja sandals. He saw his two San Kazuki reading a book on advanced fuinjutsu. Said man picked the hobby of learning the art since it was very interesting due to the fact the possibilities in knowing the art was endless and was planning on teaching Naruto the basics of it later on. Hey two San, Naruto called out getting the man's attention. Hey Naruto-chan is there something you need? He asked. Yeah where is Ka-san? We were supposed to go to the park for a while. He asked until he felt something brush against his leg. He looked down only to see a black cat purr and rub against his leg. Naruto blinked, kneeled down and rubbed the cat behind the ear making her purr louder. So how long do you plan on staying in that form Ka-san? Naruto asked his adopted mother and stopped rubbing her behind the ear. I was enjoying that darn it. She mumbled and then her cat form glowed and became more human-like until it died down and Yoruichi's original form appeared, she's wearing her clothes in this FIC people. You just love using my weakness against me don't you Sochi? She asked with a playful glare on her face while Naruto grinned. Well considering the fact that you always stay in that form and act cat like I can't help but do that. He stated, so are we gonna go to the park? Sure let's go. She said and Naruto was about to head out with her but then stopped. Hold on Ka-san I want to ask Tu san something. He replied while she blinked in confusion and watched Naruto approach the genius. Hey Tu san Kazuki looked up at his book once again. Yes, he asked, can I wear your hat to the park? He asked pointing to Kazuki's green and white striped hat. The man blinked and tilted the hat up a little. You want to wear my hat? He asked and got a happy nod from the young blonde. Kazuki smirks, pulls the hat off his head and placed it on Naruto's who grinned in return. Sure you can kiddo and if you want you can keep it. He said I smiling and Yoruichi's eyes bugged out of her head. Really, I can have it? Naruto asked excitedly and Kazuki nods and pulls out another hat that looked similar to his old one and placed it on his head. Yep just be sure to take care it alright. He asked the young blonde who nods his head excitedly while Yoruichi groans. Oh great now we've got a miniature Kazuki in the house. Kami help us, she said making the inventor chuckle. Oh come on now Yoruichi-chan the hat looks great on even though it's a little big he'll grow into it. Plus the hat would be better than having him wear Kenpachi's hairstyle. He stated while Yoruichi shuddered at the thought. You're right the hat's a lot better. So Naru-chan you want to race to the park via Shunpo? She asked with a wide grin on her face. During Naruto's training she started to teach him a game she used to play with Bukuya and Soifen called Flash Tag and the point to the game was to tag her. Yeah let's race there, I want to show you how good I've gotten in using Shunpo. He said enthusiastically and without warning the two vanished while Kazuki shook his head with a smile on his face. Well then I guess I should get started in making the training room for Naruto once he gains his Zanpakuto from his Shinigami powers now where did I put those schematics? He asked himself and started to look around for them. Park Yoruichi and Naruto appeared in the park and said Namikaze was panting slightly. Yoruichi saw this and chuckles. Not bad Naru chan but you have a long ways to go before you can keep up with me. She said cheekily while he snuck his tongue at her. I know that Ka-san but just you wait the day will come when I beat you and gain the title Shinjin, God of Flash. He stated which makes her smile even more. And I look forward to the day when you face me in an all-out Shunpo match Sochi, oh look it's one of your friends from the academy. 
she said and they turned their attention towards a young girl with long midnight blue hair that was tied into a ponytail, had pupilous and light lavender eyes, and was wearing a beige jacket with blue pants and sandals and appeared to be picking up flowers. Watching her was a woman who looked like an older version of her but her hair wasn't tied into a ponytail and she was wearing a lavender kimono and apparently held a two-year-old girl in her arms. They were Hanada Hayuga, her mother Hasana, and Hanada's little sister Hanabi. Hey it's Hanada Chan, her mom, and little sister. He said with a grin on his face and suddenly vanished. Yoruichi shakes her head and does the same. Naruto appears behind an unaware Hanada while Hikari's eyes widen but she giggles quietly and watches the scene. The young blonde was crouching down with a huge grin on his face and held two of his index fingers out and around Hanada's sides. Hey Hanada-chan. He says and pokes her in her sides making her jump on her feet instantly and squeak. She turned around only to see no one except for her mother, little sister, and Yoruichi. She blinks in confusion because she swore she heard Naruto's voice. Behind you. He said and she turned her head only to see a grinning Naruto wearing a green and white striped bucket hat. Naruto-kun, she said happily and hugged the blonde who returns it. After she ends it she looks at his hat and blinks. Anya when did you start wearing a hat? She asked tilting her head to the side which made her look cute in his opinion. Oh this, I got it from my dad. Do you like it? He asked as he tilted it up and she giggles and nods. Hi I like it. She said and was about to say something else until Naruto was tackled by a black blur and the two hit the ground making the Hyuga heiress's eyes widen especially when Naruto's hat landed on top of her head. Naruto was on the ground with swirls in his eyes while on top of him was a nine-year-old girl with long raven back hair and obsidian eyes and was wearing a dark blue shirt with the Uchiha clan symbol on the left sleeve and a pair of black shorts. She looked like a miniature version of Makoto and she was grinning down at Naruto. Hey Nato-kun, she said happily and gets off of him while Naruto shook the cobwebs out of his head and sits up rubbing his head. Hey Makoto-chan, he said and pats his head a few times. Wait where's my hat, he asked frantically only to have it placed back on his head by Hanada. Thanks Hanada-chan, he said getting a smile from the girl while Makoto blinks when she saw him wearing it. Isn't that a little too big for your head Naruto-kun? Makoto asked. Yeah but I'll grow into it. My dad gave it me, he said while she smirks. It looks nice, she complimented and looked at Hanada. Oh hey Hanada, she said nonchalantly and a tick mark formed on the young girl's head. Hikari and Yoruichi saw this and smiled. That girl I swear she can be so rude sometimes, said a feminine voice. Yoruichi and Hikari turned their heads only to see Makoto approach them with a smile on her face. Greetings Yoruichi-san. Hikari-san. Makoto said and sat right next to Hikari. So this is little Hanabi. She said and put her finger in front of the cooing girl who grabbed and tried to squeeze the appendage with her small hands. Well isn't that cute? Yoruichi said smiling at the sight. So who does she take after? The dark-skinned woman asked Hikari. After her father especially with all the crying she does. She said jokingly. The only time she's really quiet is only when she's near Hanada. So how is the clan faring Makoto? I mean with the incident and all. Makoto lets out a sigh and strokes her hair back. A lot better than a year ago. After Fugaku's death, most of the ninja in the clan wanted the man responsible dead but Itachi-kun put an end to that idea knowing they'll only be rushing to their deaths and when a few of them spoke out against him, well he showed them and everyone else why he was the new clan head, she answered. Wow and how are your younger children taking it? Yoruichi asked. Makoto apparently has shown a little remorse but afterwards she's been taking it well since she really wasn't that close to Fugaku due to the fact that he always neglected her most of the time but she spent most of her life around Itachi-kun. Sasuke on the other hand didn't take it so well. She said with a frown on her face. I see and he'll be likely to take it out on Naruto-kun. Hikari stated while Yoruichi scoffs. He can try but all he'll get is a trip to the hospital. The former Shihoin heiress said. Ever since that day we adopted Naruto, Kazuki, Kukaku, and Kenpachi have been training him so that he can defend himself when we aren't around, she said. The kid's smart and is a hard worker. Makoto looked and saw how Naruto was socializing with Makoto and Hanada and smiled. So what about you and Hiyashi Hikari-san? How's he handling the elders? The female Uchiha asked and Hikari sighs in frustration. 
He's doing fine except that the council is getting on his last nerve, telling him that one of our daughters needs to be put into the branch house since we couldn't have two heirs. She said with a frown and hated the fact that those traditionalists were attempting to put that accursed caged bird seal on her children. And if those old fossils even attempt to try it I will kill them myself, traditions be damned. She said with a scowl on her face. Meanwhile Naruto and Hanada were sitting cross-legged looking at Makoto wearing the hat Kazuki gave him and was grinning. So how do I look? She asked the two. Hanada giggled and Naruto snickered. Sorry Makoto-chan but I don't think your head is really suited for hats. He stated while she pulled it off and shook her head. Yeah you're right. Hats don't really suit my head. She said and placed on top of Hanada's head and snickers. Hey Hanada looks like a hermit wearing it. She stated while the girl huffed up and puffed her cheeks out making Naruto laugh. So for the rest of the day the three hung out while their mothers chatted until they had to head back home. The next day Hokage Tower Tsunade and Jiraiya, along with Kazuki and Yoruichi were in the office talking about Naruto and the abilities he'll gain during his training and also talked about the Hogyoku which was now a part of Naruto while Kenpachi and Kukaku were staying at the compound with Naruto. So Kazuki tell me what exactly does this Hogyoku do? I mean how does it affect Naruto since it was put into him a year ago? The female Senju asked the man who tilted his head up. What does it do exactly? Well aside from the fact that it rejuvenated his body and made him stronger than the average human it has the ability to destroy the boundary between a Shinigami and a Hollow. He answered getting shocked looks from the two Sanin. That was the original intention I had when I created it but apparently it can do more than just break their limits in terms of power. It actually materializes the hearts around it or in other words it materializes a person's inner desires, he stated. Inner desires? Jiraiya asked and Kazuki nods. Yes though it'll be a while before the Hogyu fully awakes even if it's chosen Naruto as its new master. For now we'll just be teaching Naruto how to control his Shinigami powers as well as teach him how to control his inner hollow. He replied and got confused looks from Tsunade and Jiraiya and Yoruichi decided to speak up. His inner hollow is how you say his darker half, she quoted. During the process where we implanted the Hogyoku in Naruto and it healed his body a hollow mask in the form of a fox appeared on his face and then it shattered afterwards meaning that he'll become a wizard, a shinigami that gains hollow powers, she explained while their eyes widen. Now his inner hollow fester until he gains his Zanpakuto or a soul slayer which is a weapon that is formed from a shinigami's soul and is their partner like me and my Zanpakuto Benahime. Kazuki states holding the cane sword up. So when do you think Naruto will gain his Zanpakuto? Jiraiya asked the crazy genius who pulled out a fan and waved it in his face. Give or take I'd have to say in two years tops he'd gain it and until that time comes, we'll continue with his regular training. He states getting nods from them both. Two year time skip. Two long years have gone by and Naruto's training in the shinobi and shinigami arts have improved a lot. During those times, Naruto met and befriended some of the other clan heads kids that were in his class and they were Yukumo Kurama, Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, Choji Akamichi, and Shino Aburame. He also met a few of the older students in the academy namely Tenten and Rock Lee. When he met Lee the kid was being picked on by some of the older kids because of the fact that he couldn't use ninjutsu or genjutsu. Naruto intervened and said bullies ended up taking a one-way trip to the hospital. After that, Naruto and Lee hit it off pretty well and on occasions they would spar whenever they had the time to. Naruto's two main problems were Sasuke Uchiha and Kiba Inazuka and for two different reasons. For Sasuke the reason why is because of the fact that Kenpachi killed the boy's father and didn't like that some nobody was above him in the academy. He also didn't like the fact that his sister was hanging out with Naruto. For Kiba the reason why is because of Hinata. Ever since they entered the academy Kiba had gained liking to the heiress and would make attempts to ask her out. Even when she refused to he'd still pester her about hanging out with him and not some orphan from the streets. There were times when Naruto would have to threaten to beat the crap out of Kiba if he didn't leave Hinata alone and he did once when the 11 year old Inazuka made a remark about Hinata being a prize which resulted in Kiba getting a black eye, bloody nose, and a foot in his rear end. During his training with his family Kazuki told the young blonde that in a few years he'd be gaining his Zanpakuto which should be around the time he's 11 or his 12th birthday. There were times when Jiraiya had to leave Konoha to keep the update on his spy network that was spread across the elemental nations but he would leave Naruto some scrolls and books on ninjutsu and fuinjutsu. 
During his training with the Toad Sage he had the blonde make an attempt to summon a toad and to the man's surprise he summoned two battle toads. Right now Naruto was sitting under a tree meditating while he and the other students were on their break in the academy. Hey loser, called Sasuke Uchiha who was now approaching the meditating blonde. Go away Uchiha, I have neither time nor the patience to deal with you. Naruto said as he kept his eyes closed which made Sasuke frown at the blonde. Look here Uzumaki I want you to end your friendship with Makoto and stay away from her. She shouldn't be hanging around with a nobody whose family consists of nobodies. He ordered and Naruto opened one of his eyes and gave Sasuke a look that unnerved him a little. First of all Uchiha don't go insulting my family especially when you don't know anything about me and as for Makoto-chan I'll hang out with her whenever I want to and no one especially a weakling like you will not stop me and considering the fact that my uncle sent your father on a one-way trip to the afterlife for being a stuck-up prick who thought he was untouchable you would be wise not to piss me off. Naruto stated. Shut up. At least I had a father and am not some mere orphan boy who was crapped out by some slut that should have smothered you with a pillow on the day you were born. He shouted since heard about Naruto by some of the villagers and knew that him not having any parents was a touchy subject for the blonde and thought that this insult would make the boy snap. That idea failed though because now Naruto wasn't sitting under the tree meditating. Without warning he snatched Sasuke up by his collar and slammed the idiot against the wall with his fist raised while the Uchiha had a look of fear on his face. Naruto swung his fist towards Sasuke's face while said prick closed his eyes waiting for the impact to hit. However it didn't and heard the sound of a fist hitting the concrete wall hard entered his ears and opened his eyes only to see an extended arm near his head and Naruto's fist implanted into the concrete wall which had forms cracks around it. A bead of sweat fell down his face as he looked into Naruto's eyes which were as cold as ice. Listen here you runt of the family and listen well. Naruto said in a cold tone which made the Uchiha shiver. You are treading on dangerous grounds right now and you should consider yourself lucky I didn't hit you with my punch or you would have had to get your jaws wired shut and half of your teeth removed and replaced. If you ever insult my family or my deceased mother again I will break you in half and send you back home in a ing wheelchair do you understand me? He growled out and Sasuke nodded in fear. Naruto pulled his fist out of the concrete wall and to the Uchiha's surprise, Naruto's fist didn't have any scrapes or blood dripping on them nor were they injured in any way or form. Naruto released his grip on Sasuke's collar and the Uchiha slumped down on the ground while Naruto walked away. The runt of the clan snapped out of his stupor and growled. This isn't over you low-class scum. Not by a long shot, thought Sasuke, as he glared at the retreating form of Naruto and vowed to make the blonde pay. Watching from the shadows was Itachi Uchiha. He was impressed when he saw Naruto punch a hard concrete wall leaving the imprint of his fist and not even wince from doing that. He was also disappointed at how Sasuke was acting towards Naruto and could tell he would end up suffering the same fate as their father would if he didn't get his act together. That Uzumaki kid is pretty impressive huh Itachi? Shisui asks standing on a tree branch with his hands in his pockets while said clan head nods. Yes he is and considering who's been training him he'll be the strongest in his age group within a few years. He said while the master of Shunshin nodded. Yeah can't say I can say the same for your runt of a brother. That kid seriously needs a wake up call and if he keeps pissing Naruto off then don't be surprised if he does come home in a wheelchair. Shisui states and the two Shunshin away. Namikaze estate, backyard, Kazuki, Yoruichi, Kenpachi, and Kukaku were standing in the backyard with Naruto a couple of feet away with them with his shirt off. The Shiki Fuin seal was now glowing and pulsing which started to increase every few seconds. So it's already happening huh? The kid's gonna receive his Zanpakuto? Kenpachi asked. On the inside he was excited and wondered just what type of Zanpakuto Naruto would and was inwardly praying that it would be a very powerful one. It appears so Kenpachi. Kazuki said waving his fan in front of his face and spoke up. Okay now Naruto when I say now, release as much of your Riatsu as you can until you reach your limit alright? He said and Naruto nodded. Yes too san. Naruto said. Kazuki kept a stern eye on the seal as the pulse grew. Okay Naruto, now, he shouted. Silver white colored Riatsu erupts from Naruto's body like a volcano and flares around the field sending gusts of wind everywhere. Kukaku whistled in wonder as she saw her nephew unleash this much spirit energy. Man this kid's spirit energy is unreal. 
It's almost on par with that of a lieutenant, she said. I'll say. Kenpachi said with a shark-like grin on his face. Who would have thought that all that training we gave him would make him gain this much spirit energy? While Naruto kept releasing his spirit energy the seal on his stomach started to melt and the blonde started to sweat due to the fact that he reached his limit. Just hang in there a little longer Naru-chan. Yoruichi called out and couldn't help but worry about her son's well-being and hoped he would come out alright. When the seal fully melted away, a small golden orb formed in front of Naruto's torso and his body really heavy and his knees started to give way until Kenpachi shouted. Hey Gaki don't you dare keel over. Keep pushing damn it. He barked out and Naruto stood his ground and pushed as much spirit energy out as he could out while the orb grew in front of him. Almost there. Kazuki said silently while the orb continued to grow. All right Naruto you can stop. He called out while the blonde's energy slowly died down until it was no more and the blonde fell on his hands and knees panting heavily. His eyelids felt heavy and he was about to collapse until Yoruichi caught him before he touched the ground. She carefully turned him around and saw that his chest was rising and lowering slowly and was trying to catch his breath. He's fine. Admitting that much of his riatsu from his body was a little too much for him. She said and she hoisted him on her shoulders while the orb started to die down. When it did both Yoruichi's, Kazuki's, and Kenpachi's eyes bugged out of there when they saw two Zanpakudos lay in the ground in a criss-crossed position but that wasn't the reason why they were shocked beyond belief. Kukaku saw this and she blinked a couple of times. Okay why do you three look so shocked? She asked. I don't believe this. The Gaki's got old man Yamamoto's Zanpakudo. Kenpachi stated as he looked at one of the two Zanpakudos. The hilt was purple with the guard was circular with flames around it. It was sheathed in a red sheath that had a golden flame pattern starting from the tip and ending around the middle of the sheath. The Zanpakuto that was considered to be the oldest and most powerful to ever exist in Soul Society. Ryujin Jaka. That's not all Kenpachi, he's got Ishin's Zanpakuto also. Kazuki said with a look of awe on his face. It had a dark red handle and a hexagonal handguard that had two crescent moons on the opposite sides and connected to the end of the hilt was a blue tassel and it was in a sheath that was black and red. It was Injetsu, the brother blade of Zanjetsu. Let's get Naruto inside. Kazuki said and the other three Shinigami went back into the estate. On the inside though Kazuki was stumped. Out of all the Zanpakuto, Naruto had gained one that was wielded by not only the founder and leader of the Gotei 13 but the strongest Shinigami to ever live for 2000 years. Ryujin Jaka was a blade even Captain Class Shinigami feared and for a good reason. It represented absolute power and there was no other Zanpakuto whose powers came even close to matching its. Now the blade was back and it has chosen Naruto to be its new wielder and the genius couldn't help but wonder just how powerful Naruto would become with that blade by his side and the same went for Injetsu. While not as powerful as Ryujin Jaka, Injetsu was no pushover especially since Kazuki has personally seen just how deadly the blade could be in the hands of a master swordsman. Ishin and Injetsu were a force to be reckoned with. Who would have thought that out of all the Zanpakutos he would gain the old man's? If he ever masters that blade's powers there won't be a force on earth that'll come close to being his equal. Kenpachi said with Yoruichi and Kukaku agreeing with him. Hokage's office the next day, so Naruto has gained two Zanpakutos? Tsunade asked Kazuki who nodded at her question. Yes but the Zanpakutos he gained are two very powerful ones and if he masters them then the boy will surpass both of his parents and well as the other cages in the future. He said and Tsunade raised an eyebrow so he decided to explain. The first one he gained was the most powerful and oldest of the Zanpakutos and it had no equal. It was a powerful fire-based Zanpakuto known as Ryujin Jaka which was wielded by the captain commander of Gotei 13 named Yamamoto Genri Yusai who was a master in every form of the Shinigami arts and has been the leader for over 2.000 years. Tsunade's eyes widen in shock. Even without Ryujin Jaka the man had no equal in terms of skill and power. The other one he gained was known as Injetsu which is also a powerful blade. It was wielded by a man named Ishin Kurosaki who was the father of Ichigo, the one who beat Aizen. He finished while Tsunade took in this information. So does he know the names of them yet? She asked and Kazuki shook his head. No the four of us are not gonna tell him. He'll have to find out their names on his own by trying to communicate and bond with them until they find him worthy of knowing their names. The man stated. Okay just be sure not to make him go overboard. 
His biological parents have a tendency of doing such a thing and it resulted in them having to be sent to the hospital for being reckless, she quoted with her fingers while the man chuckles and nods. Sure thing Hokage-sama. The man said and Shunpo's away and knew that things were about to get more interesting for his adopted son. During Naruto's training, Kazuki created a training ground similar to the one he and Yoruichi trained in when they were kids so that Naruto can train privately with his Shinigami powers. Right now an explosion occurred and smoke rose from the air. Leaping out of the smoke was a 12-year-old Naruto wearing a dark green shirt with black cargo pants and black shinobi sandals and he was skidding back a couple of feet with Injetsu drawn. He had Ryugan Jaka strapped to his back and had a couple of cuts and tears in his clothes. Ever since he gained them the four Shinigami upped his training to where he'd train with them each and they didn't give the boy any slack since they each wanted him to be prepared to face anyone especially those stronger than him. They also had him do some meditation training in order to communicate and bond with his soul slayers so far he can only hear their voices but they haven't revealed themselves to him yet and stated he wasn't ready to know their names yet. Naruto was panting a little while setting his gaze on the rising smoke. Coming out of the smoke was none other than Kenpachi Zaraki grinning with his Zanpakuto drawn and dragging the blade across the floor, making sparks fly and then brought it up and let it rest on his shoulders. He also had a few cuts on his chest and clothes but they weren't as bad as the ones Naruto had. Come on kid you're cutting me but you're not doing any real damage. You need to come at me with the intent to take my life. He stated but inwardly he was impressed that Naruto was actually able to cut him and hold his ground even though the former captain of squad 11 was holding back a lot of his power but increased it every now and then so that Naruto can keep his guard up. I know that. What does it look like I'm doing? Trying to cut through your skin is like me using a butter knife to cut through solid steel. I'm cutting you but not doing any damage. Naruto replied and had to admit his uncle, while not as strategic as his parents and aunt was one hell of a fighter that was able to give even captains with their bankai unleashed a run for their money. And do you want to know why? It's simple. Look at my blade. He said holding his sword out sideways and his spiritual pressure rose around him. His Zanpakuto appeared to be vibrating and a golden glow surrounds it. Do you see this? My blade is filled with the desire to take your life. He answered and pointed at Angatsu. Yours on the other hand lacks that desire because of your fear to strike me at your fullest. Kenpachi said and shot towards Naruto in a burst of speed with his blade raised. Naruto's eyes widened when Kenpachi brought his blade down on the blonde's head. Naruto raises his blade to block the attack with his other hand on the flat end of the blade. Another explosion of dust erupted from the ground and the training grounds shook from the power Kenpachi put behind the blade. Naruto was gritting his teeth in frustration from the strength Kenpachi put into the blade and was struggling to keep the man's sword from cutting him in two. D damn it, he growled between his teeth. Kenpachi smirks and starts to unleash a series of slashes and thrusts that were aimed at the vital parts of the blonde's body. Naruto was having a hard time blocking and evading them and ended up getting a series of cuts on his body. Come on kid, you're making this too easy for me. He said and suddenly kicks Naruto in the torso. Naruto spits up and is sent flying backwards and crashes into a rock structure that explodes from the impact and crashes into the ground, tumbling backwards. As he skids to a stop, the blonde painfully gets up and coughs up some blood while clutching his side. His eyes suddenly widen when he saw a foot descending towards his head and he uses Shunpo to get away in just the nick time because the foot hit the ground so hard that it left a small crater. Naruto's panting increased while Kenpachi walked out of the crater he created with a disappointed look on his face. What is wrong with you kid? Why are you running away like a coward? He asked which pissed Naruto off. I am not a coward. Naruto stated but then he froze up when Kenpachi's golden Ryatsu flared up and made the ground shake. Spare me the bullshit kid. Look at you. I'm merely releasing a fraction of my spiritual pressure and you look like you're ready to keel over. You're afraid of me because I'm coming at you with the intent to end your life. If I was the enemy then you'd already be dead. He said and raised his blade in the air and brought it down, releasing a yellow shockwave that descended towards a stunned Naruto. Meanwhile Kazuki, Yoruichi, and Kukaku were watching the fight from afar and saw an explosion of golden energy. What is that idiot doing? Is he trying to kill Naruto? Kukaku asked in a pissed tone and looked like she was ready to jump down there and stop the fight before Kenpachi actually kills Naruto. Kukaku don't jump down there. Yoruichi said in a serious tone which made her best look at her in shock. This is for Naruto's own good. 
she said while she clenched her crossed arms because she too wanted to stop the fight going on. His own good? I know you two are doing this so that he can know the names of at least one of his Zanpakutos but look who he's facing damn it. Kukaku yelled pointing to the direction where another dust cloud appeared. Don't you think we know that? Yoruichi snapped back surprising Kukaku because she's never seen Yoruichi snap at anyone unless she was pissed off which was very rare. Look Kukaku I know the Shinigami king brought us back to life and helped Naruto reach his potential and be ready to face any threat that comes his way but we can't be there to always bail him out of trouble and you know it. She finished. Kukaku gritted her teeth in anger but nodded. Don't worry though if it gets out of hand I'll personally stop it. Kazuki said seriously as he had a binding spell ready should Kenpachi go too far and actually hurt Naruto. Back at the fight, Naruto's left arm was bleeding and blood dripped from the side of it. Kenpachi was slowly making his way towards Naruto while said blonde was gritting his teeth in anger. Damn it. Even though I went through all that training I still can't face Kenpachi even when he's holding back. Why? I practically trained until it hurt to even breathe but it's still not enough. What am I doing wrong? The blonde thought in frustration and looked at Injetsu. He was wondering why his Zanpakuto won't reveal themselves or give him their names. They kept saying he wasn't ready and that he'll know when the time comes which just frustrated him. How could he not be ready? As he pondered on this he found himself in his mindscape. In there the sky was dark and there was a crescent moon shining into the sky. What the? Where am I? Naruto thought as this was one part of his mindscape that he has never seen before. So you want to know my name boy? Said the voice, as he formed and stood before him seeing the blonde. Apparently the man appeared to be in his early to mid forties and had unkempt facial hair and long ragged black hair that stopped to his shoulders. He was dressed in a tattered all midnight blue garbs with black sunglasses and a long flowing overcoat that flares out into ragged ends. On the back of his coat were two crescent moon patterns that were facing away from each other. As he set his gaze on his wielder Naruto feeling pissed off that they meeting face to face now. Yeah I would like especially since my uncle is about to tear me to shreds. Is this too much to ask to know your name? Why can't I learn it? I've done everything I could to show you how much I respect you and tried to bond with you. What is preventing me from learning your name? Asked Naruto, as he saw the man just stare at him for a while before speaking up. If you wish to learn my name Naruto. Then you must first learn to abandon the fear that is locked away in your heart, said the man as he saw Naruto frown, and it was clear the blonde didn't understand. Fear, what fear, there is no fear in my heart, said Naruto until the man used a portion of his power to make Naruto fall on one knee and clutch his chest due to the lack of oxygen in his body and said man was starting to lose his patience with the boy due to the fact that he's acting stubborn and ignorant. Do not patronize me boy. You know the fear I speak of. Don't deny it isn't there for I have seen it myself. The fear of letting those close to you down. The fear that they will die when you could have saved them had you been there to help them as well as the fear of dying before someone stronger than you. The man bellowed, and he saw Naruto look away with and knew that he had hit home. So what do I do? How do I get strong enough to face those that are stronger than me? How do I keep the ones I cherish the most from dying? How do I make those that care about proud? Tell me, how can I accomplish this? Naruto asked the nameless man standing before him, because he wanted to be strong for those close to his heart, and protect them when they couldn't protect themselves. The man made his way towards Naruto and then placed a hand on his shoulder. It's quite simple Naruto. Abandon your fear. Look forward. Move forward and never stop. You'll age if you pull back and you'll die if you hesitate. The man answered while Naruto pondered on what he said. He's right, if I continue to fear and hesitate I along with those I care about will suffer. I must remove all fear and all hesitation. I must look to the future. Thought Naruto, as he opened his eyes, and saw the man in front of him and gave the spirit that was his Zanpakuto a nod. So you finally understand what I meant. Good, now rise Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Rise and use my power to aid you in fighting against the enemies that await you and to protect the ones you cherish. Now say this incantation to release me and speak my name. The man bellowed, as he spoke his name to Naruto, and the blonde nodded his head. Outside his mindscape, Naruto Nelling body started to glow a silver white color and it suddenly erupted from his body and flared around wildly until it formed into a pillar of light. 
Kenpachi stopped moving towards Naruto's fallen form and blinked a few times. What's this? His Ryatsu is rising and growing stronger but how? A few minutes ago his power started to dwindle and less, he said to himself but then his eyes widen when he sees Naruto lift his head up and saw that his eyes were the same color as his Ryatsu. Kenpachi grinned as he felt the amount of energy Naruto was releasing. So he's finally done it huh? He found out the name of his Zanpakuto. The other three saw the pillar of silver white energy appear and their eyes widened. Incredible. He's finally found out the name of his partner. Kazuki said while Benahime vibrated from the energy she was feeling. Naruto slowly stood up and raised Angatsu into the air. Tear a path of destruction throughout the heavens and rip the moon apart with your mighty fang, Angatsu. Naruto cried out and his Ryatsu exploded outwards but after a few minutes it receded. Kenpachi's eyes widened when he saw Angatsu in its released state. The blade looked exactly like the Shikai of Ichigo's blades on Jetsu but with a major difference. The blade's silver edges was serrated and on the silver edge was a black crescent moon on both sides as well as two white crescent-shaped moons on the black side of the giant cleaver but were in a reversed form. A silver hilt with grey wrappings and a short length of chain was formed at its base and the blade itself curved inwards at the back side of the tip similar to a trench knife all in all, the blade looked pretty wicked. Uncle, Naruto said in a calm voice getting the man's attention. I suggest you try not to take this next attack head on. He advised while the blade glowed. Kenpachi on the other hand raised an eyebrow when Naruto said this. Oh. And why is that Naruto? Kenpachi asked and the answer to his question was Naruto lifting up his head and the irises of his eyes were now silver. Because right now I can barely control it. Naruto replied and the ground underneath him exploded and formed a ring around him. Kazuki's eyes widened when he saw this and inwardly cursed. Kenpachi remove your eye patch now. Do not face that attack head on. The man yelled. Kenpachi's eyes widened when he heard Kazuki tell him not to take that attack head on and felt the power emitting from Naruto's Shikai. A battle cry escaped from the blonde's mouth and he swung in Jetsu downward, releasing a powerful silver white energy wave that descended toward Kenpachi. Shit! Kenpachi said and instantly ripped the eye patch off. Kazuki, Yoruichi, and Kenpachi were forced to cover their eyes as the attack emitted a bright light and debris flew in opposite directions. As the attack died down they uncovered their eyes and saw a long and wide deep crevice that stretched on for miles and Kukaku whistle. Wow talk about destructive. Wait where is Kenpachi? She asked and was inwardly fearing for the worst and thought that the man was vaporized by the attack. There he is, Yoruichi said and saw the man was a couple of feet away from the crevice. Said battle hungry warrior's eye packed was gone and there was a deep gash that started from his shoulder and ended at his torso. Blood was dripping down his arm and the left side of his clothing was gone. Man that was close, Kenpachi muttered as he saw the deep crevice. Had I not removed my eye patch I would have lost my arm. He turned his attention to Naruto and saw the blonde was sprawled out on the ground snoring with drooling while Angatsu was planted on the ground. Kenpachi chuckled at the sight and walked over to the unconscious Shinigami, Shinobi in training. Good job kid, you put everything in that move and actually cut me. He said and that was when the other three Shinigami appeared beside Kenpachi and Kazuki chuckles. Would you look at that? The poor kid used so much of his energy into that attack that he knocked himself out. Talk about reckless. He said jokingly while Engatsu reverted back into its sealed state. Yoruichi walked over to Naruto's unconscious form, puts Engatsu back into the sheath, and picks up Naruto, placing her son on her back. Yeah reckless just a certain orange haired boy we all used to know. Yoruichi stated with a smile on her face since Naruto did remind her a little of Ichigo since the teenager had a knack for pushing himself over the edge especially for those he cares about. Afterwards, she carries him off into the compound while Kazuki looks at the damage and sighs. Well I guess I'll need to get this place repaired, he said and Shunpo's away. Kukaku walks over to Kenpachi and sighs when she sees him a torn. Yubaka haven't you ever heard of the word restraint? She asked as she placed her hands on her hips while Kenpachi snorts. Please restraint is for cowards and weaklings and no nephew of mine is gonna be one. He said only to get slapped upside the head by the female Sheba but he hardly felt it. Baka. He's a kid for crying out loud. You're supposed to train him not beat him near an inch of his life like you did those idiots, she yelled while he smirked. It's called tough love Kukaku. 
So are you gonna just stand there ogling my torn up body or are you gonna get me patched up? He teased making the woman blush and glare at him. Shut up or you're sleeping on the couch for a week. She threatened but all that made Kenpachi do was grin. That may have an effect on Kazuki but we both know who'll be missing who in the bed at night. He responded while her cheeks puffed out and she walked away dragging the man by his torn collar. Kenpachi on the other was checking out Kukaku's swaying hips and ass and whistled. Is it just me or are your skirts getting tighter? He asked and Kukaku's entire face turned scarlet and steam was coming out of her ears. It took all her willpower not to punch the man dead in the face but if she did that, she'd only be hurting her own hand if not breaking it since his skin is tougher than steel. In Naruto's mindscape and Jetsu was floating in the midnight sky staring at the moon. So when do you plan on revealing yourself to the boy? In Jetsu asked as he kept staring at the moon and that was when a pair of red slit eyes appeared behind him. Soon but right now he's too impatient to know my name let alone meet me. Once he learns to balance himself out I will appear before him but for now he's not ready. The deep and powerful voice said and Ninjetsu nods. I agree but he does have a lot of potential to become even greater than our former wielders with us by his side. Ninjetsu states. Indeed he does but until then train him well Ninjetsu. The voice says and the eyes fade away into the night. And train him I shall, Kayubi. Ninjetsu replies. Two year time skip. Underground training camp. The sound of a sword cutting through flesh was heard in the training area and a creature with a hole in its torso and was wearing a white skeletal-like mask held in pain and dissolve as it was sliced diagonally by a blade. When it collapsed, a 14-year-old blonde had Angitsu drawn and leapt onto the ground. He was 5 feet 6 and was wearing a dark blue sleeveless muscle shirt with a pair of black pants that had a silver line going down and wore a silver belt around the waist and wore Andu-like sandals. He also wore a pair of black fingerless gloves with metal plating on them. His hair was shoulder length and it was wild and spiky with jaw length bangs on the sides. His eyes were deep blue with slit pupils and a pair of canines jutted from his upper lip. His face and body was derived a baby fat and he had the physique of a trained fighter but his speed and strength were well balanced so in other words he was ripped. Strapped to his belt was the sheath of Angitsu while Ryujin Jaka was strapped to his back. He was Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Ever since he learned the Shikai of Angitsu he'd always ask his partner for advice when he was training with the blade. Apparently Angitsu got along better with Naruto than he did Ishin since Naruto started to become calmer and less hot-headed than he was two years ago. Blood was dripping down his blade and Naruto fed it off and sheathed his sword. That was when some black portals formed around him and more of the masked creatures that were called hollows were coming out and growling at Naruto. Said blonde smirked as he saw the Soul Eater make their way towards him and appeared to be salivating as they set their hungry gaze on Naruto. Well would you look at this. I appear to be outnumbered. He said to himself as he mentally counted how many hollows there were. A total of 10 A. Eh? No problem. He said. The blonde suddenly shunpos in front of the face of a surprised hollow and grins. He rears his right fist back and strikes the creature dead in his skull face. Cracks form and spread across the hollow's face and it falls backwards and crashes into the ground before dissolving. Naruto remained hovering in the air and then turns his attention to the other nine hollows with the same grin on his face. Next, he says and shunpos away again and cuts down two more hollows that dissolve away. One hollow charges at Naruto who had his back turned but the blonde just points his index finger at the beast and it glows blue. He suddenly fires a powerful lightning bolt from his fingertips and the bolt hits the hollow in the middle of its head and goes through it, leaving a smoking hole in its cranium and it dissolves. Hado no yan. Byakurai. Naruto says while a large fist descends towards his body. Naruto vanished as the fist misses and appears above the hollow that tried to strike him from behind with his right leg up. He descends towards the hollow's head and delivers an axe kick to the creature's skull and it crashes head first into the ground. He holds palm out and aims it at the down hollow. A sphere of red energy forms in his palm. Hado no Sanjuchi. Shakaho. He fires the crimson energy at the down hollow and an explosion is caused. Tch, this is boring. He said and set his gaze on the remaining four. He places his left hand on the sheath of Angitsu. He uses his thumb to push the guard up a little and he suddenly vanishes and appears behind the remaining hollows with his sword halfway drawn and slowly sheathes it again. Blood shoots out in every different direction from the hollow's bodies and they all fall to pieces before dissolving. 
Naruto slowly lands back on the ground and brushes his hair back. So much for a decent morning exercise. He mumbled as he walked over to a rock texture and takes Ryujin Jaka off his back and places it to the side. He picks up a dark green jacket and puts it on but leaves it open and then grabs a green and white stripped bucket hat and places it on his head and then straps Ryujin Jaka back on. Well we can't have you going to your final day in the academy now can we Naru chan said a voice behind him and Naruto turns his head to see his mother sitting on a tree branch eye smiling. Naruto sighs and speaks up. When are you gonna shop calling me that Ka-san? Naruto groans since the name in his opinion was annoying and embarrassing especially when she says it in front of others like Hinata, Makoto, and Yukumo. Said Shunpo expert hops off the branch and lands down on the ground with a Cheshire cat grin on her face. Once you graduate Mr. Soon-to-be Rookie of the Year, she said and the blonde groaned as she said that. Now then you need to head to the academy and get your headband. We'll be there to greet you shortly. Once I can get that crazy inventor out of that damn lab. Yoruichi said and mumbled the last part while Naruto chuckles and Shunpo's out of the training camp. Academy, I don't see why you continue to bring us to your classes Naruto. Engatsu stated as the blonde walked into the hallways, heading to his homeroom. I must agree with Engatsu Gaki. Why bring us to this god-awful place where all your instructor does is talk about boring lectures all day? And let's not forget about that annoying Uchiha who keeps demanding to know where you got us. Asked Ryujin Jaka, even though Naruto didn't know the name of his second Zanpakuto yet, it still gave him sagely advice and helped him in how to perform certain things the right way and how to improve in the areas he's weak in. Now don't be like that you too. You're both my Zanpakuto meaning we are bonded for life since you guys are a part of my inner self. That and I like using you too to intimidate some of the idiots in the academy and village. Naruto answered while the two chuckle. Naruto finds the door to his homeroom and opens up the door only to get glomped by a black blur who happened to be none other than Makoto Uchiha. She was now 5 feet 2 and her hair was tied into a high ponytail while two bangs fell down over the sides of her face. She was wearing a black sleeveless tank top that hugged her body which was toned like a kunoichi's from training so much and wore a pair of black gloves and a dark grey skirt with biker shorts under them along with a pair of black sandals. Hey Naruto-kun, she said with a pretty blush on her face while said blonde smirks. I see you're still wearing that old bucket hat. Hey now don't insult the hat my old man gave this to me. At least it can fit my head, he said while she released him and I smiled. How is it that you can get that hat on that bird nest you call a head anyway? She asked humorously while they walked to their seats where Hinata was waiting for them, she's wearing her shippuden outfit but her hair is tied back. Naruto on the other hand gave her a mock glare. Hey now don't go insulting my hairstyle Makoto-chan. At least mine doesn't resemble the rear end of a duck's like your brother's does, he stated which made her giggle. Said male Uchiha was sitting near a window in the third row brooding until he saw Naruto walking with his sister and sneered at the blonde but Naruto just ignored him which pissed Sasuke off even further. As the two got seated Naruto said in the middle of Makoto and Hinata and the Hyuga heiress suddenly took Naruto's hat and placed it on her head. Naruto blinked in surprise when she did that. Hey Hinata-chan get your own hat. Naruto whined while she giggled. But I like this hat Naruto-kun she said while the blonde rolled his eyes. This was something he got used to while they were in the academy. Hanada would normally take his hat and wear it until they either had breaks or until the classes were. It was also a habit Hanabi picked up because whenever Naruto went to visit Hanada at the Hyuga estate, his hat would always disappear off his head and end up on Hanabi's and the blonde would always wonder how someone so small could get her hands on his hat so quickly and he wouldn't notice which was shocking for him because his senses were beyond even that of an Inazuka's. Even now he still pondered on how she pulled it off. Say Hanada. Naruto says getting the girl's attention. Yes. She asked. How is it that your Imaudo manages to get her hands on my hat without me noticing? He asked while the heiress blinked a couple of times and thought about it for a few minutes but then frowns. To be perfectly honest, I don't know. She said rubbing the back of her head while Naruto sighs. So are you three ready to graduate and get out of this hell on earth? We call an academy? He asked humorously while they giggled and nodded. Hopefully we won't have to listen to any more of Aruka sensei's hour-long lectures, said a voice next to Hanada which happened to belong to Yakumo Kurama. 
She had light brown hair that stopped to her waist and golden brown eyes. One of the bangs on the side of her head were braided and had red flower on it. She was wearing a red battle kunoichi outfit with a mesh shirt under it and black sandals with black skin tight shorts and holding the outfit together was a purple obi sash. Hey Yukumo chan. Naruto greeted and the girl eyes smiled and waved back. Still wearing that old hat I see Naruto kun, she said and his shoulders slumped. Why is everyone always commenting on my hat? It is that ugly. He muttered to himself while the three giggled. Afterwards, Iruka and his assistant Mizuki entered the classroom and said white haired Chunin had a look of anger and hatred in his eyes, especially when he set his gaze on Naruto. Naruto saw this and narrowed his eyes dangerously at the Chunin and released a small burst of ki on the man who recoiled but regained his posture when it died off. Who does that Teme think he's trying to intimidate? My uncle's gaze makes his look like a newborn kitten. Naruto thought and knew Mizuki was one of the Kaiubi haters, but never tried anything to ruin the blonde's academics in fear that the new Hokage as well as his family would crush the insignificant man should he make an attempt to. But I better keep an eye on this guy. He looks like he's up to something. Naruto thought since his mother trained him in human psychology and how to read a person's emotions, actions, and body language and Mizuki looked like he wanted to gut Naruto like a fish. As if he could. Skipping other students' exam Makoto was the last person to exit the door where the exam was being held and she had a grin on her face as she walked out wearing her new leaf headband and back to her seat. Wow you got your headband. Congratulations Makoto-chan. Naruto replied and she smiled at the praise he gave her. Thanks though the test was easy in my opinion, she said. Naruto Uzumaki, you're next. The scarred Chunin said. Naruto nods and gets out of his seat but removes his hat and places it on Hanada's head and makes his way downstairs and towards the test room. While in the room Uruka instructs Naruto to perform the henge, Kawarimi, and then Uruka informs him to perform the clone jutsu and that's when Naruto speaks up. Hey sensei, does it have to be a regular bunshin or can it be the different variations? Naruto asked the chunin who blinks a couple of times. I don't see why not since the rules don't state what type of clone you need to create in order to pass so go ahead Naruto. Aruka instructed in the blonde nods and does a criss cross seal. Okay then cage bunch and no jutsu, shadow clone technique, he said and in a puff of smoke seven solid clones of Naruto appeared behind him leaving the two chunin shocked and stumped. H how? The cage bunch is a forbidden clone jutsu. How did you do that and not feel any fatigue? Aruka asked Naruto. Simple sensei. The regular bunshin required excellent chakra control and due to my unnatural high level reserves, I can't perform the technique properly so my godfather taught me the cage bunshin technique though I can use two more variations of said technique but I didn't have the required elements on the room. Naruto explained. I see. Well then congratulations Naruto you pass and since you are the rookie of the year you get the rookie of the year headband that only a select few ninja in the academy have ever received. Aruka said and pulls out a black case and opens it, revealing a black leaf headband with a metal plate that has the leaf as well as the kanji fire engraved onto it. Thanks Aruka sensei. Naruto says while the man smiles and nods. He may have hated Kayubi for taking away his parents but unlike most of the village, he didn't see Naruto as the fox. Mizuki on the other hand was fuming that the boy managed to pass and realized he'd have to get someone else to help him in his little plan. Naruto walked out of the exam room with a smirk on his face and everyone gasped when they saw he was wearing the rookie of the year headband. Sasuke on the other hand was pissed that the clan less nobody had what should rightfully be his and he glared at the blonde with all the hate he could muster while Hinata, Yakumo, and Makoto congratulated Naruto. After graduation, Naruto walked out with his friends to be greeted by their parents, who all awaited the good news of seeing their sons and daughters become the future of the leaf. Among them were Naruto's adopted family, who knew the blonde would pass the graduation exam without question, and the four had smiles on their faces. As Naruto made his way towards them he suddenly found himself in a one-armed headlock by none other than a grinning Kukaku who pulled his hat off and started to give him a noogie. Way to go Mr. Rookie of the Year, I'm so proud of you, she said while said blonde was inwardly groaning and looking at Yoruichi, Kenpachi, and Kazuki to help him but they snickered. And now that you're officially an adult, you can do things adults can do like getting hammered until you pass out. Kenpachi said grinning like a madman as was Kukaku while Kazuki and Yoruichi sweat drop. 
That's fun and all you guys but I think I'll pass on that since you two are more than capable of getting hammered for all five of us especially after what happened the last time you two got dead drunk. Naruto stated making Kukaku blush Scarlet and Kenpachi to have a shark-like grin on his face. Oh I'll never forget that day. That was the best sake party I've had in a long time especially when it was over and your aunt showed me a side of her I'll never forget. He said wrapping an arm around the Scarlet woman who now had steam coming out of her ears. Thank Kami Pops taught me how to create sound barriers around my room. He mentioned something about Oba San here crying out to the heavens all night and Uncle Kenpachi being a monster in bed. Naruto said and the female Shiba was glowing red while Kenpachi laughed out loud. Kazuki chuckles and tilts his hat up, noticing that Hanada was being congratulated by her parents and Hanabi was practically bouncing around her sister saying how lucky she was to be a ninja. Makoto and Sasuke were being congratulated by their mother and Itachi was currently ruffling his little sister's hair much to the girl's displeasure. Sasuke glanced at Naruto and his family once again and frowns. Itachi notices this and inwardly sighs wondering why Sasuke can't just let things go and stop antagonizing the young blonde. That was when Mizuki approached the four and spoke up. Excuse me Makoto-sama. May I please borrow your youngest son for a few seconds? The Chunin asked and Makoto blinks for a few seconds and nods. Sasuke was confused also but shrugs and follows the man to a corner. So what do you want? Sasuke asked the white-haired Chunin who smirks. Just wanted to know if you were interested doing a special test that would improve your clan's reputation more as well as proving to the Uzumaki kid that you're better than him despite his status as rookie of the year. Mizuki asked the boy who raised an eyebrow and had a look of interest on his face. What kind of test? The Uchiha asked and Mizuki's smile grew. Oh just a test only the elite get to handle. Elites like yourself but before I get to that, would you like to know a secret about Naruto over there and why some of the people in the village don't seem to like him? He asked and Sasuke nods because he wanted more than anything to put the blonde freak in his place which was under his foot. Right now Naruto's family as well as Hinata's were talking to each other while Hinata just stood there and listened Naruto looked around and turned his attention to Mizuki who was talking to Sasuke and saw the Uchiha's eyes widen but then narrow and glares at Naruto from the corner of his eye getting a raised eyebrow from the blonde and also saw Mizuki grinning like he won the lottery. Sasuke smirks back at Mizuki and shakes the man's head and nods. Now Naruto was wondering what the two were planning. Hey Naruto. Come on we're gonna go celebrate at the house with sake. Kukaku yelled in Naruto sighs and heads back to meet his parents. Nighttime Sasuke Uchiha was heading into the forest smiling. Why do you ask? Because he managed to sneak into the Hokage tower and steal the forbidden scroll that contained powerful and dangerous techniques without even getting noticed. Once I get this scroll to Mizuki and get the jutsu in it my clan's reputation will go beyond even the Yandaimis and prove that I'm better than that freak who calls himself human. The prick said. Is that so? A familiar voice replied and Sasuke stopped and looked around until Naruto appeared in front of the Uchiha who had his arms folded. You must be very brave or very stupid to steal one of the most treasured possessions in the village Sasuke. Sasuke scowls and sets the scroll down. Get out of my way demon. I've been given a mission that only the elite can do and no freak of nature will get in my way. He said as he wasn't gonna be denied his path to greatness by some orphan. Naruto on the other hand narrowed his eyes at the prick. What did you just call me? Naruto asked dangerously while Sasuke had the nerve and gall to smirk. What? Surprised that I know about your little secret Naruto or should I say, Kayubi? Sasuke said with a grin on his face and Naruto's eyes were now as cold as ice. Mizuki told me about how you're responsible for attacking the village and killing the Yandaimi. He said and pulled out two kanai. So I think I'll do the village a favor and kill you monster. He said and charged at Naruto with a sick smile on his face. Naruto on the other hand vanished shocking Sasuke and the next thing the Uchiha knew, he was struck in the torso by a powerful kick and was sent flying into a tree and slides down it. You really are stupid Uchiha. Naruto said in a cold tone while Sasuke struggled to get up. You just broke a high class law that is punishable by death and by all rights I should kill you. He said and Sasuke's eyes widen as he saw Naruto slowly draw his sword but then stops midway and smiles. Actually I don't think that will be necessary since your brother looks like he wants to do the deed for me. Naruto finished which confused Sasuke until a shadow loomed over him and said Uchiha had a look of fear and dread on his face. 
he slowly turned his head to the right only to see Itachi's looming form look down at him and his Sharingan eyes were glowing red. Hello little brother. Itachi said in a cold and dark tone while the runt of the family shivered in fear as he saw the soul-piercing gaze his older brother gave him. You have no idea how much trouble you're in you fool. Said clan head grabbed Sasuke by his collar, lifted him up and punched Sasuke with so much force that said boy was knocked out instantly. Naruto-san can you deal with the other traitor? I already informed the Godem about the scroll being stolen and she has sent ninja to search for Mizuki and the scroll. Itachi asked and Naruto nods. Sure thing and all your brother's fate in your hands. Naruto said as he handed Itachi the forbidden scroll and the Ichiha nods. Very well and as for my little brother, he's gonna be having a little one-on-one -on -one session with me and he'll be lucky that he doesn't get sent to jail or worse banished from the clan for his insolence. He replies and then shunshins away with Sasuke and the scroll so that he can deliver it to the Godem. Naruto whistles and tilts his hat down. I'd say I feel sorry for the Teme but then I'd be lying. Now it's time to take down the traitor. Naruto says and shunpos into the forest. Mizuki smiled evilly at his brilliant achievement in fooling that Uchiha into taking the forbidden scroll of sealing, as he just lied to the brat about it being a top secret exam, and given to only those with the greatest kind of potential in being a shinobi of the leaf. Said raven-haired boy was giddy with when he said that and how the kid followed the notion without question. Hello Mizuki Tem said Naruto from behind the so-called teacher and scaring the man right out of his hiding spot. Naruto chuckles and tilts his hat up. You, what are you doing here demon brat? said Mizuki, as he saw Naruto grinning at him, and knew it wasn't a good thing that the boy was here. Funny, I was actually wondering the same thing about you. As it turns out, your little errand boy got caught not too long ago by me and his brother. You know Itachi Uchiha right? said Naruto as he saw Mizuki look at him in surprise, then leaped from the trees to the grass, and tried to make a break for it before Naruto appeared in front of the traitor. Within moments, several shinobi surrounded them, and their weapons were drawn. So the big bad demon is actually using his brain for once. Perhaps you'd also know why you are hated by everyone in the village. Why these shinobi would sooner attack you and let me go free while they become the heroes of the leaf for ending your miserable existence, said Mizuki as he knew several of these shinobi, and knew they hated Naruto for what he held. If you're referring to the Kaiubi, then yes I do know of him, but sadly the fox is no longer a part of me, said Naruto, as he saw Mizuki frown at him, and so did the other shinobi too since they didn't understand what the boy was talking about. Don't try to hide it. You are Kaiubi, you attacked the leaf twelve years ago and now you are going to die, said Mizuki as he saw the leaf shinobi around him look at the blonde, and grinned at how this worked out for him. Oh really, said Naruto, as he looked around to see the leaf shinobi around him were now all getting ready to fight him, instead of going after Mizuki, and sighed at this new turn of events. Yes really, that may be Hokage, but she will never be able to remove the village's desire to spill your blood demon. Even if she has the backing of those four freaks that are your adopted family, the village will never care about you and will see to it that your life ends one way or another at their hands. Said Mizuki, as he pulled out a kunai, and was pleased that this situation was in his favor. You may be right but I could care less. Naruto said and pulls the sheathed Ryujin Jaka of his back and the ninja were now on edge. And if they want to make an attempt to end my life then they can go ahead and try but just like the other fools who have tried. Naruto vanishes once again and several flashes of silver appeared in different directions surprising the ninja and Naruto appeared behind the group with Ryujin Jaka halfway drawn and slowly sheathes it. They will fall before my blade. He said coldly and fully sheathes his sword and blood shoots out of the traitor's body and they fall to the ground dead. Mizuki on the other hand manages to substitute himself with a log but he was clutching his bleeding arm. Damn you demon, I'll kill you if it's the last thing I do. He said as he pulls out a capsule filled with a purple substance and drinks it up. He suddenly fell on all fours and his body started to transform. His body grew and started to turn gray. As he morphed rows of gag-like teeth formed in his mouth, his eyes turned yellow with black patches around them and his chunin vest and shirt started to stretch but then it ripped apart as did his sandals while his torn pants remained. Mizuki was now big, bulky and gray and was salivating at the mouth as he stared down at naruto with hunger in his eyes if you're all wondering mizuki is the same height as yami as from bleach 
So what do you think demon? This is the form I'll use to kill you and remove your taint from the world. The now demonic Mizuki says while Naruto just looks at him. You look like something from a horror movie. He said which caused Mizuki to snarl and raise his giant arm. Die demon. He roared and brought his fist down on Naruto's form. Naruto vanishes while the traitor's fist slams into the ground and creates a giant crater. Naruto appears behind Mizuki with a grin on his face. You missed traitor, he said and the man's head turns. He snarls and tries again only for Naruto to vanish again and miss. For the next 10 minutes Mizuki creates a path of destruction in the forest and Naruto just dodges his attacks. Gra, come and face me demon or else I'll go pay a visit to those three girls you care about so much and have some fun with them especially the Hyuga slut. He roared out but then he cried out in agony due to the fact that his right arm was lopped off and blood sprayed out of his stump of an arm. Naruto was now standing on thin air with a pissed off expression on his face. Consider those words your last traitor. Bakudo no Rokujuichi, Rokujikoro, Naruto says pointing his index finger at Mizuki. A flash of yellow emit from his fingertips and six thin, wide beams of light that slam into Mizuki's midsection. Ga. I I can't move. What did you do to me demon brat? Mizuki roared, struggling to escape from the beams of light that kept him from moving. Perhaps now I can be of some assistance to you Naruto, said Ryujin Jaka that was glowing a reddish orange color. Said blonde blinks and looks at the glowing sword. Now is not the time for questions. You have earned the right to now use me since you balanced yourself out both physically, mentally, and spiritually. Now repeat these words and call out my name. The deep voice says and Naruto nods. Fiery colored spirit energy flares out of Naruto's body and the air around him appears to be heating up. Now you're screwed Mizuki, Naruto says as the flaming aura grows. Reduce all creation into ash, Ryujin Jaka. As he said the incantation and the name of his second Zanpakuto, a large blazing firestorm erupted out of nowhere and roars to life behind Naruto. Mizuki's eyes widened in awe and disbelief as he saw the pariah of Konoha summon a large wall of fire out of nowhere. Incredible. So this is your Shikai Ryujin Jaka. I can practically feel the heat from your flames, the blonde thought. Yes Naruto this is my Shikai. As you know I am the he oldest and most powerful of any other Zanpakuto. My very Shikai was strong enough to even make Captain Class Shinigami fear me. My flames are not ordinary either. The heat alone is powerful enough to scorch even the heavens and incinerate all in its path, he explained while Naruto's eyes widened. Do not worry though. My flames will only harm those that are your targets and will protect those whom you cherish. Now then incinerate this vile creature and give him a reason why your will of fire is so strong, my former vessel. He finishes and Naruto's eyes widened even more and looked at the flame-covered blade. Kayubi was all he got to say as he heard Mizuki roar and thrash around like a mad dog. Oh I forgot about you Mizuki Tem. Now then I hope you like hell because that's gonna be your permanent vacation spot. He says and swings the blade downwards and a large wave of fire descends towards Mizuki whose eyes widened in fear and disbelief. That last thing Naruto heard from the traitor was his wailing screams as the flames devoured him but they soon died off in no less than a few minutes. Naruto lands on the ground as the flames surrounded him and as he sheathes his weapon the flames return into the blade and dissipate. Naruto looks around the forest to see it was slightly charred and grins a little. I guess I need to work on my control a little more, he said and then Shunpo's away to inform his godmother about the traitor's death. To say Tsunade was pissed was an understatement. She couldn't believe that the shinobi she sent out to go after Mizuki and would go so far as to make an attempt to kill her grandson and assist the now dead traitor. Another thing she was pissed about was that now Sasuke Uchiha knew about Naruto's former condition and also broke the law and right now she wanted nothing more than to beat that prick into paste. Right now Itachi and Naruto were in the tower. Sasuke however was at the Uchiha police force HQ with Shisui watching over him to make sure he didn't do something stupid. Itachi the actions your brother committed tonight were very serious. Not only has he stolen the Forbidden Scroll but he also knows one of Konoha's greatest secrets and that is Naruto being the container of Kayubi. Not only that but he attempted to cause physical harm to the last survivor of the Namikaze clan. She said in a serious tone while the clan head nods in agreement. Yes I know Hokage-sama and I am asking you that I be the one that deals out his punishment since his actions will also affect me and my clan's reputation. 
Itachi asks the female Senju who raised an eyebrow. I can understand that much but do you realize that Sasuke could and probably will lose his shinobi license over this event and he'll more than likely be doing some prison time? She states and once again Itachi nods. Yes I know but perhaps we can come to some form of compromise Hokage-sama. Itachi suggests since he wanted to resolve this situation in a good way that will not destroy what little dignity his clan had left in the village since his father as well as the former elder council were responsible for what their clan was reduced to. A compromise? What did you have in mind? Tsunade asked as she knew Itachi was one of the few Uchiha who wasn't arrogant and doesn't believe he is above the others in terms of status and rank. That is why he was acknowledged and respected by his peers especially the more experienced ninja because it amazed them how someone so young can be so mature. I would suggest one where he is to be put on probation in the village for at least five months and he will not be allowed to do any missions outside of the village until you deem him and whatever team he's on ready. He said while she pondered on this. I know the punishment may seem, light, in your opinion but like I said earlier I will be giving him my form of punishment and show him the errors of his ways. Trust me when I say that what I'm requesting will be an act of mercy compared to what I have planned for my little brother. He said as his Sharingan eye flashed for a few seconds. Tsunade and Naruto saw the look in Itachi's eyes and didn't know whether or not to be sorry for Sasuke. Tsunade personally saw how ruthless Itachi could be with certain members of his clan being examples. A couple years back when Itachi became the new clan head, a few members of the police force wanted to avenge their former fallen leader but instead got beaten near an inch of their life by Itachi and afterwards had their eyes sealed away, dishonored publicly, thrown in prison, and removed from the Uchiha clan. Itachi proved why he was the new clan head that day and stated that he will not tolerate their attitudes and warned the rest of them that if they tried anything that he would personally deal with them. Tsunade on the other hand pondered on this and smirks. Well since you put it that way then fine, I'll allow you to deal with Sasuke personally Itachi. Naruto do you have anything to say since this does concern you in a way? Tsunade asked her godson who tapped his finger on his chin for a while and shrugs. Nope I'm good, he said cheerfully while she sweat dropped. Itachi on the other hand raised an eyebrow. Are you sure Naruto-san? You don't want any form of compensation for what my brother has done? Itachi asked the Namikaze heir who shook his head again. I assure you Itachi-san I am fine. Besides it's not your fault Sasuke did what he did and he should pay for his actions not the entire clan. For now I'm giving him a warning but should he pull something like this again then I will have no other choice but to result in using alternative methods. Naruto replied in a serious tone. Itachi nods and then stands up. Well then I should be on my way back to the police station to have a discussion with my foolish little brother. He says and leaves out of the office. Tsunade sighs and pulls out a bottle of sake. You know Kyobu you shouldn't drink so much especially at your age, he commented and she glared at him. Shut up and go home you troublesome brat, she said in a joking manner. And congratulations in becoming rookie of the year. She then removes the necklace that had a green gem on it and removes Naruto's hat, getting a raised eyebrow from the blonde. Think of this as your graduation gift from me Naruto. My grandfather's necklace, she said and ties it around his neck. Naruto on the other hand smiles warmly at his godmother. Thanks. I'll be sure to take good care of this, he says and gets up, putting his hat back on. Oh and the secret to beating all that god awful paperwork is the cage bunshin. Naruto replied leaving his godmother wide eyed and stumped. After a few moments she snapped out of her stupor and fumed. So that's how that bastard Minato got all his paperwork done. She said and looked at the photo of the man hanging on the wall. If only you were here to see how these people treated your son since the day he was born. Luckily four people came and changed all that. I hope you and Kashina are having a great time in heaven. She said as she opened up the bottle and drunk it. The next day, Shinobi Academy team selections. Right now Uruka had just started to call out the teams while Naruto was talking with Hinata, Yukumo, and Makoto. So who do you think will be on teams? Hopefully I will have one of you as teammates. Naruto said and was inwardly praying that he wasn't on a team with Sasuke, Hiba, or Sakura since the three didn't like him for obvious reasons. Yeah same here, Makoto said, last night Sasuke got into some serious trouble with Itachi Ni and Ka-san. She mentioned something about Sasuke pulling a stupid stunt that involves a traitor wanting to steal a certain scroll and you Naruto-kun. She said while the blonde raised his eyebrow. 
Said Uchiha was sitting in a faraway corner from most of the other students looking like someone had stolen his favorite toy. He also had a few faded bruises and some patches on his face and apparently wasn't happy at all. Yeah but I can't tell you girls on account that it's a top secret that is punishable by death if revealed to those unaware. Luckily your brother was spared from death by Itachi-san by the request of the Hokage. He replied and got a nod from the girl. That was when Aruka spoke up. Team 6 will be Makoto Uchiha, Yukumo Karama, and Naruto Namikaze. He answered and his eyes went wide when he said that as did everyone else in the classroom. You're the son of the Yandaimi. How come you never told us? Yukumo asked. I couldn't since my dad has made a lot of enemies that would love nothing more than to kill me to get back at him for what he and my mom did during the last war. That and he had some enemies inside the village as well. Naruto explained and saw that all of Sasuke's fangirls were now leering at him and he sweat drops. Hanada, Yukumo and Makoto each saw this and had different reactions. Hanada growled and activated her Byakugan out of pure rage Makoto did the same and activated her fully mature Sharingan and glared dangerously at the fangirls while a dark aura formed around Yukumo, and the shadowy figure of a grinning demon formed behind her. Stay away from our Naruto KUNU sluts. The three Kunoichi in training thought and they look ready to tear these weaklings who call themselves Kunoichi. Their reactions caused these girls to cower in fear and avert their gaze at the Namikaze air. Uruka on the other hand had a huge sweat drop on the back of his head. Okay, he said snapping out of his stupor. Anyways Team 6 a sensei will be Yugao Azuki. He finished. When Sasuke saw his sister reveal her fully mature Sharingan, copy we lie, his eyes widen in disbelief and he seethed in jealousy wondering how she gained a fully mature one while he, the older of the two didn't and wondered if Itachi secretly trained her in gaining their clan's bloodline. Yukumo and Makoto's eyes lit up when they learned they were gonna be teamed up with their crush while Hinata was saddened. The blonde teenager patted her on the shoulder and gave her a look of sympathy while a sad smile formed on her face. Team 7 will be Sakura Haruno, Kiba Inazuka, and Sasuke Uchiha. Your sensei will be Kakashi Hataki. He finished and winced in pain when said Haruno screeched out about love conquering all. Shut up. Makoto and Yukumo yelled performing Aruka's demon head jutsu making the girl meep and shrink in her chair. Iruka coughed again and spoke up once again. Team 8 will be Shino Abirame, Hanada Hayuga, and Sai Shimura. Your sensei will be Kuranai Yuhi, he answered. Hanada breathed a sigh of relief since she didn't want to be on the same team with the perverted Inazuka. She had no issues with Shino since the bug user was a good friend of her and with Naruto. Sai on the other hand was an enigma since his way of acting was, odd in her opinion. Team 9 is still in session so Team 10 will be Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, and Choji Akamichi. Your sensei will be Asuma Serutobi. He finished. Ino on the other hand slammed her head on the desk and anime tears fell from her face and wondering why Kami has forsaken her. While she wasn't a fangirl like Sakura she did have a crush on Naruto but not on a fangirl level since she did train with Hanada, Makoto, and Yukumo whenever she had the chance. Your senseis will be here any second now and I wish you all luck in your shinobi career," he said while leaving the room. A few minutes later the door opened and a female Junin walked in. She was 5 feet 5 and appeared to be in her early 20s. She had waist-length purple hair and an ivory skin complexion. Her eyes were deep brown and she wore an anbu version of the leaf Junin outfit with a katana strapped to her back. Team 6? She called out and Naruto, Makoto, and Yukumo raised their hands. I'm Yugo Azuki, meet me outside the front of the academy, she said and shunshins out of the room. Naruto grins and wraps an arm around Makoto's and Yakumo's waists, making them squeak in surprise. Hang on ladies, he says and he shunpos with them out of the academy which shocked everyone in the room and Sasuke was growling in anger. Outside the academy Yugo was currently standing outside with her arms crossed and her eyes closed. Naruto suddenly appeared behind her with Yakumo and Makoto who were now blushing since his hands was around their waist. Hello sensei. Naruto said which caused Yugo's eyes to shoot open and she turned her head to see the bucket hat wearing Genin and two blushing Kunoichi behind her. When did they get behind me? I couldn't even sense them and how does he know Shunshin? She wondered. You're probably wondering if I used Shunshin to appear behind you and the answer is no, Naruto replied while she raised an eyebrow. If that wasn't Shunshin then what was it? She asked the blonde who grinned. 
a technique my ka san taught me called shunpo which means flash step and it's way better than the shunshin jutsu naruto answered i've never heard of this shunpo technique she states while he chuckles that's because it's a clan technique and only me and my family know how to use naruto answered and got a nod from his teacher i see well then follow me to training ground six she said and motions them to follow her to the training field training field six yugo was currently leaning against a tree with her gaze on her students whom she can tell looked like they were ready to face the hardships of the shinobi lifestyle now then since this is my first time being a sensei to the current graduates what do you all say we start by introducing each other she asks getting nods from them good then i'll start off first my name is yugo ozuki former anbu black ops captain my likes are my best friend and fellow swordsman Gekko Hayate as well as my friends Kurenai, Anko, and Hana, the sword arts, and my comrades. My dislikes are traitors, perverts, and people who have no sense of honor or respect for the fallen. My hobbies are collecting swords, relaxing at hot springs, and looking at the moon at night. My dream is to become the greatest female Kenjutsu master in Konoha. She finished. Now you three can go ahead and we'll start off with you she said pointing at Naruto who nods. Okay then. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, he said and Yugo's eyes widened at the surnames. My likes are hanging out with my friends especially my three tenshis, he said teasingly which made Makoto and Yukumo blush a little and look away while at training ground aide Hanada suddenly sneezed and wondered who was talking about her. My other likes are ramen, dango, my family and godparents, and sparring with my uncle and mother in kenjutsu and taijutsu. My dislikes are traitors, people who fear what they don't understand, short-minded and arrogant people who think they are above others just because of their name or bloodlines and to an extent a certain old monkey who lied to me my entire life. He said coldly which got the attention of Yukumo and Makoto. My hobbies are exercising, swimming, playing flash tag with my mom, inventing new devices and seals with my dad, and making explosives with my aunt who has a fetish for blowing things up. My dream for now is to become a great ninja and warrior like my biological and adoptive parents and to create a new clan. He finished while a small smile formed on Yugo's lips. Very good now you. She said turning her gaze on Yukumo who nods. Okay my name is Yukumo Kurama, heiress of the main branch of the Kurama clan. My likes are Naruto-kun, my best friends Hanada-chan, Makoto-chan, and my parents. My dislikes are those who think females aren't fit to be ninja perverts, and those who are arrogant. My hobbies are painting, creating my own genjutsu, cooking, and collecting different varieties of flowers. My dream is to become a great genjutsu master like Kurenai Yuhi, she finished. Very good and lastly you, Yugo said looking at Makoto. My name is Makoto Uchiha. My likes are fire, my older brother Itachi and my cousin Shisui, Poki, she said which made Naruto and Yukumo snicker and Makoto sent a playful glare at the two. As I was saying my other likes are my mother, strawberries, Naruto-kun, and hanging with my friends. My dislikes are most of the members of my clan, my late father and my other brother Sasuke since he acts so much like dad, and fangirls since they give us real kunoichi as well as civilian women a bad name. She replied getting a nod from Yukumo and Yugo. My hobbies are making tea, training with my oni-san, gardening, and playing with fire. She said with a grin on her face which caused Naruto and Yukumo to sweat drop. Yugo raised an eyebrow and looked at the two. Naruto was the first to speak up. Makoto Chan has had a huge fetish for fire since she was six and is a pyromaniac. One time she actually set one of the labs in the academy on fire playing with the Bunsen burner and we had to get four of the classes repaired. Naruto replied while Makoto blushed and rubbed the back of her head sheepishly. Wait, you were the one responsible for that academy fire? Yugo asked since she was one of the few Anbu who had to help and doss out the flames and had to put one of the Chunin who were on fire. Uh. Oh yeah my dream is to become a great ninja like my brother and become an Anbu Black Ops Taicho. She finished instantly and the sword mistress shook her head. Now that the introductions are over you three are gonna have to go through a test to see if you're qualified to officially become Genin. She said while Makoto's and Yukumo's eyes widened while Naruto looked indifferent. HMPH, I figured as much, Naruto said adjusting his hat a little. Really? Care to enlighten us Naruto? Yugo asked the blonde swordsman was grinning. Sure. For one thing the graduation test was way too easy. 
The second thing is the team setup and the Jonin senseis who are the captains of the team test use to see our strengths and weakness as well as want to see if we can operate as a team since that is what the ninja of the village are famous for. My godfather told me that the failure rate is around 66.6% .6 meaning that only a few teams will actually pass and those who don't will be sent back to the academy or removed from the shinobi program completely. Naruto explained and the three females remained stumped. Naruto blinks a few times and raised an eyebrow. What? Is there something on my face? He asked and Yugo sighs. Fortunately you're right. I personally have to test you all and see if you have what it takes to be actual ninja. She said pushing herself off the tree AMD motions for them to follow her in the open field. As they did Yugo took a few steps back, pulls a timer out of her weapons pouch. Now then, you will have two and a half hours to capture me and I suggest you come at me with the intent to take my life. She said in a serious tone as she turned the timer a couple of times and sets it down. Are you three ready? She asks and they nod. Okay then the test begins, now. She shouted and the three instantly vanished out of her line of sight. Forest Naruto, Yukumo, and Makoto were hiding behind some large bushes and were coming up with a plan. So we have two and a half hours to capture our sensei but something tells me it won't be easy, Makoto said. Of course it won't. Yugo sensei was once a member of the Anbu Black Ops like you brother was. There would be no way for any of us to catch her off guard even if we attack simultaneously, that is if we were any ordinary genin squad, Naruto said with a gleam in his eyes which got the girl's attention. You have a plan don't you? Yukumo asked and Naruto chuckles and nods. Yep and you two are gonna play the biggest roles, he replied and begun to explain his plan. Yugo was currently standing in the middle of the field with her arms folded over her chest and her eyes were closed. That was when Naruto appeared a few feet away from her. You know Naruto-kun revealing your presence to the enemy so early is not a good sign. Perhaps it was a mistake that you became rookie of the year she said and hoped to get him riled up and make him lose his focus. Said blonde chuckles. Perhaps but you would be wise to take me seriously Yugo sensei or should I say Nako, he replied and she smirked. Glad to know you remember me. What gave it away? She asked and Naruto tilted his hat down. The sound of your voice and hairstyle. Now then. Naruto places his left hand on Injetsu's sheath and his right hand on the hilt. I suggest you take me seriously sensei. I don't carry these swords around just for show and I'm pretty sure you heard the report about me taking down Mizuki and several shinobi who wanted to end my life correct? He asked and she nods. Yes but I honestly thought most of it was exaggerated since I find it hard to believe that a newly graduate could kill several experienced chunin and janin. She said and Naruto started to chuckle but not in a good way. Well I can honestly say that you wouldn't be the first to not believe those facts. I guess I have no other choice but to show you. He said and started to slowly draw Injetsu from its sheath. Yugao saw this and chuckles. Honestly, Naruto kun, I'm a specialist in Kenjutsu. Do you honestly think you can cross blades with me of all people? She asked. The grin on Naruto's face was now feral and looked similar to the one Kenpachi has when he's about to battle. It's a shame you never met my parents or my aunt and uncle for that matter. If you had, then you'd be regretting crossing blades with me right now. Plus there's the fact that you told me to come at you with the intent to end your life. Big mistake. He said darkly and fully drew in Jetsu. When Yugo saw the look in his eyes it unnerved her since they were not the eyes of a green genin. They were the eyes of a trained warrior and she had to hold down a chill that crept up her spine. Something tells me that I should take this seriously or I'll end up losing a limb. She thought and saw Naruto twirl in Jetsu a few times before the silver blade shined in the sunlight. You can see it can you sensei? Naruto asked while Yugo blinked in confusion. You can see my blade's desire to kill you. He finished in a serious tone and her eyes widened. Naruto suddenly vanished and appeared behind her crouching down with his blade ready to bifurcate Yugo. Said female swordsman slowly turned her head to see Naruto behind her. He's fast. Clang. In Jetsu and Yugo's custom-made katana Sukiheim, Moon Princess, collide and grind against each other. Naruto's facial expression was calm and hard as stone which unnerved the former Anbu member. I thought I told you to take me seriously. Why are you still holding back? Naruto asked calmly and stared to push her back and much to her surprise, it was only with one arm. He uses the strength behind the blade to push her back and Yugo skids back a few feet. Her eyes widened even more when she saw the blade descend towards her head and she blocks it on reflex but the impact causes a small crater to form under her feet. 
Sweet Kami how can he be this fast and strong? I knew he was rookie of the year but this is the second time he's caught me off guard. Maybe I shouldn't have told him to come at me with the intent to kill. Yugo suddenly found herself on the defensive because Naruto started to unleash a series of sword strikes while she parried and dodged most of them. Meanwhile Yukumo was watching in awe as she saw Naruto engage their sensei in a kenjutsu match. She never thought in her wildest dreams that Naruto was this strong. That was when Makoto appeared next to Yukumo and placed a hand on her shoulder. The Kurama heiress turns her head to see Makoto. The traps are in place. Give Naruto-kun the signal once he's clear, she said and Yukumo nods while the female Uchiha leaps away. Yugo continued to be on the defensive from Naruto's onslaught and got a couple of cuts on her sleeves and flak jacket. Whoever trained this kid in Kenjutsu must have been one hell of a teacher. He managed to nick me a couple of times and some of those attacks would have done more than that. She thought and then found her back pressed up against a tree and she cursed inwardly. Naruto took this opportunity to perform a diagonal slash and seemed to slice a horrified Yugo in half until she puffed away revealing a log that was cut in half and the tree he cut through collapsed with a loud crash. Kawarimi huh? He said and looked around only to see a couple of flashes from a faraway tree. Yukumo was currently flashing her headband giving Naruto the signal while he smirks. Alright. Now phase 2 begins, he says and Shunpo's out of the field. Yugo was breathing a sigh of relief behind a large bush. That was too close, she muttered but then smiled. But I have to admit he's good, he'd probably give even Hayate a run for his money. She suddenly jumps to her feet and leaps away due to the fact that a volley of Kanai ascended towards her and hit the spot she was formerly at. As she lands, she feels something tug back under her ankle and looks down to see some ninja wire. She hears something snap and shooting from the trees was a volley of shuriken, kanai, and senbons. She leaps away from the trap and onto a tree branch but hears something sizzling. She looks down and her eyes widened when she saw several exploding tags sizzle and light up. Whoa! She cried out and shunshins away while half of the tree explodes. She appears away from the burning tree and a block blur appears behind her. It was Makoto with her leg reared back. Out of pure reflex, Yugo blocked the kick with her forearm. Makoto stops the kick and grabs Yugo's sleeve and uses it to lift herself of the ground and onto the air with her leg raised. She brought it down but Yugo caught it with her hand and grabbed the girl by her arm and threw her off. Makoto flipped her body and landed back on her feet. She then started to perform some hand seals at Chunin level speeds making Yugo's eyes bug out. No way she can perform hand seals at that speed in elemental jutsu. Did Itachi teach her? She thought while Hikari stopped at the tiger seal and inhaled. Kaden. Gokyaku no jutsu, fire release, grand fireball technique. She exhaled and unleashed a fireball at Yugo. Said sword mistress curses and performs a few hand seals. Sweden Tepodama, water release. Gunshot. She fires a condensed ball of water at the fireball and when the attacks collide, they cancel each other out and steam forms around the area. As the fog clears Yugo notices that Makoto was gone and couldn't sense her. That was when a skeletal hand popped out of the ground and grabbed her ankle. Yugo had a surprised look on her face as more hands reached out for her body and saw skeletons crawling out of the ground. Genjutsu ha! Huh? Nice try Yukumo-san! She said and brought her hands together in a ram seal. Kai! The skeletons start to ripple away much to her relief but the area around her started to form into a pair of red eyes with three tomo surrounding a pupil and spinning rapidly. Unreal. She said as she saw the eyes disappear and the next thing she knew, she was impaled by black pikes. A grunt escaped her lips and she shakily placed her hands in a ram seal. Kai. She called out and the illusion instantly dispelled. She breathed a sigh of relief and shook whatever cobwebs she had in her head out. A strong dual layer genjutsu. It takes a lot of skills to pull something like that off. Apparently I got a strong bunch. She said with a smile on her face. Indeed. Said a voice and she turned her head only to see Naruto sitting on a tree branch eating an apple. After he finished eating the apple he tossed it away. That was pretty amazing. Performing a double layer genjutsu like that. Then again Yukumo-chan is from a clan of genjutsu masters and inherits a powerful form of their keke Genke. Makoto is the same in Genjutsu considering what clan she hails from. He stated and tossed the core away. While I'm not that skilled in Genjutsu like there I can use them properly but I'm more of a fighter. Naruto says and hops off the tree and lands on the ground. 
Anyways I think we need to end this little fiasco so sorry if I cut this game of hide and seek short. He says and holds his hand up and a golden spark forms in his hands and it slowly grows and forms around his hand. Yugo raised an eyebrow at this and was wondering what he was doing. He then starts to form the golden outline of an upside down triangle and three fang like beams form around the corners of the shape. Before Yugo could do anything a pair of hands popped out of the ground and grabbed her ankles. What the, the former Anbu says and that was when Yukumo appeared behind Yugo, did a small series of hand signs and slammed them on the ground. Doden. Doryuheki. She called out and a wall of earth appeared in front of her. Bakudo no Sanju. Shidotsu Sansen. He said and the beams shot forward. Makoto who was underground released her grip on Yugo's ankles and the next thing Yugo knew was that she was pinned to the earth wall by the beams of light with two pinning her arms and one pinning her torso. You forgot to mind your surroundings sensei. Naruto said tilting his hat up. Yukumo walked around the wall of earth she created while Makoto was pulled out of the ground by Naruto and said Uchiha dusted off her clothes. The alarm rings and Yugo sighs but then a smile forms across her face. Well it looks like the test is over and you three, pass. She said I smiling. Makoto and Yukumo cheered and glomped Naruto. Now would you both be so kind as to get me out of this? Naruto smiles and snaps his fingers and the binding spell dissipates. Now then the true meaning of the test was teamwork since that is what we're famous for. Even if you didn't catch me, I would have passed you anyways since you three show a lot of promise. As of today team 6 is official. Congratulations. She said and could already tell that her team would go far in their shinobi career. At the Hokage Tower, Tsunade was listening to the reports on the current teams and so far most of them failed and she was inwardly groaning. After putting the council in their place and reducing their power to a minimum, she was able to change the shinobi academy especially when she had the instructors explain the true aspects of the shinobi life and what to expect when doing missions. Most of the parents who were civilians were not happy about this and complained about it to Tsunade but the female Hokage ignored their protests to instruct them on the harsh life of a shinobi and told them that if they didn't want their children to lay their life on the line for their own home then they had no right being soldiers under her rule because she knew that most of those students thought that they would become glorified heroes but that was nipped in the bud when she told the headmaster and instructors not to sugarcoat anything shinobi wise and be realists which made those that were active or veterans glad that she did this. She was also able to start up the new medical program she was working on to reduce the shinobi casualties, much to the displeasure of the civilians and two advisors since they believed that shinobi should just shrug off their injuries and move on but couldn't do anything about it since she didn't show any form of leverage whatsoever like her former sensei did and for those who spoke out, well they were fired and had a one-on-one -on -one session with Ibiki. After a janin named Genma stated that his team failed Tsunade and the other janin turned their attention to Yugo who was smiling. Team 6 passes Hokage-sama. Yugo stated in the slug sonin and Itachi who decided to come and hear about how his younger siblings did had looks of interest on their faces. Really? Care to enlighten us on how they did? Tsunade asked. Well to be honest with you Hokage-sama they went even beyond my expectations as I didn't expect them to be this good. The sword mistress said. Naruto-kun was the first to start the evaluation off by engaging me in a kenjutsu match. Oh. And what did you think of his kenjutsu skill wise? Tsunade asked while Yugo smiled sheepishly and rubbed the back of her neck. Whoever trained him in kenjutsu was a master. Even when I was his age I was never that skilled with a sword and he even managed to get a few hits on me even though I held back but something told me he did too. She stated which got wide eyes from them since Yugo was one of the most prominent sword users in the village aside from Hayate. To say that a graduate and rookie of the year no less managed to pull something like that is beyond amazing. I see. So what about the other two? Tsunade asked. Makoto Uchiha is without a doubt very cunning. During my battle with Naruto-kun, she started to set up a few traps in order to catch me off guard. After wards, she managed to perform a katan jutsu and hand seals which matched the level of a chunin, forcing me to use a water jutsu to stop the attack creating a dense fog. She managed to disappear in the fog and during that time Yukumo took the opportunity to create a genjutsu while I was distracted. I made an attempt to dispel it but apparently Makoto managed to assist her by creating a dual layered genjutsu with her sharingan and forced me to input more chakra in order to dispel it since it was at least on par with a B-ranked genjutsu. She explained while the rest of them remained gobsmacked. And finally they managed to capture me. 
Naruto-kun created a strange jutsu that appeared to be based off of Light and Makoto and Yakumo took this opportunity to use two earth-based jutsu. Makoto used the Shinju Zanshu no jutsu, double suicide decapitation technique, to bind my legs and keep me from escaping and Yakumo summoned a Doryuheki, earth mudwall, while Naruto used a technique he called Shitotsu Sansen, beak piercing triple beam to pin me to the earth wall and successfully caught me before the time ran out. She finished and every jonin in the office was bug-eyed and speechless. Itachi on the other hand was amazed and couldn't help but smile at how much his little sister has progressed and was gonna make sure to congratulate her on her skills. When she was six she awakened her Sharingan due to the fact that he was teaching her some chakra control exercises and one that was based off of increasing her senses by channeling chakra into her eyes, ears, and nose and when she focused too much into her eyes, she ended up activating her Sharingan but she kept it a secret from Fugaku and Sasuke. During those times Itachi would help her understand the different levels of the Sharingan and how to use them properly. He also taught her his style of fighting especially those that are stronger and more experienced and how to keep her posture and emotions in check as well as be one step ahead of her foes. Kakashi on the other hand whistled in amazement when he heard how skilled his sensei's kid and Itachi's Imouto were. Looks like you've got an interesting team Yugo, the man stated. Thank you senpei. Yugo said to her former captain. Now how did your team do? Did you fail them like you did the last ones? She asked and the man's sweat dropped. Uh, no, he answered and she raised her brows at this. So they passed? She asked the man who rubbed the back of his head. Yes and no, he answered and saw that they wanted an explanation. Yes they passed because they in a sense understood the quality of teamwork but they failed in the performance. Sasuke was arrogant and apparently has taken the lone wolf attitude and believes that his other teammates would slow him down. He explained which caused Itachi to frown and sigh. Sakura is a fangirl who thinks Sasuke is her knight in shining armor and she passed out from an E-ranked genjutsu. She may have book smarts but she lacks the physical concepts that shinobi need. Not only that but she is loud, short-tempered, and reacts violently to anyone that insults Sasuke. He answered getting sweat drops from everyone. Kiba apparently is also loud, brash, and cocky and is also impatient, not planning any of his moves and attacking without eyeing his surroundings since he got caught in academy-level traps he said. But they do show some potential and if they can get their heads out of their backside then they would be an excellent combat squad. He finished and was mentally crying and wondered what higher deity he pissed off. After hearing how the other genin had failed and passed Tsunade informed the ones who passed their teams to have them ready to do missions by tomorrow and told Kakashi not to be late or she'd have Kuranai burn his books which made the man shiver in fear. Yugo was about to leave but then Tsunade stopped her. Hold on Yugo I need to speak to you for a moment, she said which made Yugo blink but nod as the others left. Yugo I believe that your genin squad is the most qualified to start off doing C-ranked missions, she said which made the woman's eyes widen in surprise. Are really Hokage-sama? I mean what about them working on their teamwork skills? She asked and the busty woman scoffed. Yugo those three including Hanada have known each other since they were little and I know they trust each other with their lives. Not only that but Naruto is very protective of them and will crush anyone who tries to harm a hair on their head. Plus those D-ranks will only be a waste of time since they're mostly used to improve teamwork, she explained while Yugo pondered on this and smiled. Very well then Hokage-sama. My team will report here for their first C-rank mission tomorrow, she said and shunshins out of the office. Uchiha clan compound Makoto had just removed her sandals near the slide door and opened it. Ka-san, Oni-san I'm home. Makoto called out and saw her mother poke her head out of the kitchen and smiled. Hello Makoto-chan. Come on and I've got some snacks on the table. She said and the young female Uchiha made her way into the kitchen only to see Itachi sitting at the table drinking some green tea. Hey Oni-san. Makoto greeted while the current clan head looked up at his little sister and smiled a little. Hello Imoudo. I take it you passed your sensei's test? He asked and she nodded enthusiastically. Yes but it was thanks to Naruto-kun. He came up with the idea on how to catch our sensei. She replied getting a nod from Itachi. Yes Naruto-san is indeed an interesting person especially since he was the one who caught the traitor Mizuki who tried to steal the forbidden scroll. He stated which made her eyes widened. You mean Naruto-kun was the one who did that? Wow I never would have thought he could beat a chunin but then again our sensei was an anbu and he managed to get a few hits on her with his blade. 
Speaking of blades, Oni san, do you think I can borrow one of your ninja twos? I've been working on my own style of kenjutsu that is based off of my speed and flexibility, and I need a light katana in order for it to work. She asked Itachi, who raised an eyebrow. Do you want to borrow one of my ninja twos, huh? He asked, and she nodded. Very well, but first you'll have to show me this sword style so that we can see which of my blades are compatible with it. He replied, and she grinned. That was when a scowling Sasuke walked in the kitchen and sat on the opposite side of Makoto and Itachi who raised an eyebrow and wondered what his problem was this time. Makoto on the other hand sighed and shook her head in disappointment in her youngest son's attitude. Hello to you too Sasuke. Makoto said while he looked at her and his scowl grew and it started to get on her nerves. Okay what the heck is your problem? She asked in an annoyed tone. How did you get the Sharingan and a fully formed one at that? Sasuke asked demanded to know from the older twin who raised an eyebrow. What does me having the Sharingan have to do with you? I activated it when I was six years old, she answered while Sasuke got mad when he heard this. Tell me how to activate mine. He ordered which made her narrow her eyes at him and Itachi had to keep himself from rolling his eyes. I don't have to tell you anything you jerk. You want to gain them then figure it out yourself. You are not our late father and you will not order me around like that idiot used to you brat. She snapped back at the runt of the family whose eyes widened in surprise. How dare you talk about dad like that it's that freak's family's fault that he's dead. Sasuke yelled and that was when her eyes flashed red for a few seconds and was a few seconds from hopping over the table and punching her idiot brother in the face. Naruto-kun is not a freak and you better stop insulting him. Just because he beat you in everything and is better than you doesn't give you the right to be an ass to him. She said while Sasuke scowled. I don't know what you see in him. If only you knew why half of the village didn't like him then you would see things my way. He muttered but then cringed when she activated her Sharingan and gave him a glare that he only saw Itachi use when he was either irritated or ready to hurt someone. The only thing you're gonna see is my fist in your eye if you don't shut up. She replied in a dangerous tone. Sasuke. Itachi said in a tone that make the boy recoil. You are treading on dangerous grounds now stop upsetting Makoto or else. He ordered and set his gaze on Sasuke who gulped a little. And don't forget about what you did that could have gotten our entire clan in trouble and should be lucky I managed to convince the Hokage to allow you to still be in the shinobi ranks. He said harshly which made Sasuke flinch and scowl. Whatever. I'm out of here. He said getting up from the seat and leaving. Makoto sighs in disappointment when she saw this. What is wrong with that boy? She asked herself. Itachi-kun I'm heading to the grocery store to get a few things I should be back soon. She said and Itachi nodded. Come Makoto. Let's see if we can find you a suitable blade. He said as he got up and Shen did the same. Ne Itachi ni. Do you think you can loan me some of your old Anbu armor? Yugo Sensei is having a start off doing C rank missions tomorrow. She asked and Itachi nodded since he did keep his old uniform in storage. Of course but you can't have the mask. He replied which made her pout since she really liked the weasel mask he had and on occasions would steal it from him. But I like the mask. She whined which made him chuckle and f her on the forehead with his index and middle finger, making her yelp and rub her forehead. Then you can get your own when you join Anbu like I did, Itachi replied while she stuck her tongue out him. Namikaze estate Naruto walked into the amazingly furnished compound with his shoes off and tossing his hat onto the hat rack. Hello anyone home? Naruto called out only to catch what looked like an empty sake bottle and raised an eyebrow. Keep it down brat said Kukaku who was lying back on the couch with an ice pack on her head. I told you to take it easy on the sake last night especially with Uncle Kenpachi, he stated while she chuckled and winced as her head throbbed. That bastard's gonna be the death of me sake or bedwise, she muttered while Naruto pulled out a bottle of aspirin and tossed it to her and she caught it. Please tell me this isn't any of Kazuki's experimental medicine, the pyromancer asked which made Naruto snicker. No it isn't. I got this from an actual pharmacy, he said. Speaking of dad, where is the mad genius? He asked only to hear an explosion which made Kukaku jump up and hold her head in pain. Never mind, I'll just follow the explosions, he answered. Tell that goofy pervert to keep it down or I'll introduce him to a new firecracker I invented, she growled out while her nephew sweat dropped and made his way over to the lab Kazuki made. He walked towards the door that said lab in kanji and saw smoke exit through it and chuckled. 
He opened the door only for more smoke to escape and when it cleared he saw Kazuki rubbing the back of his head while having a few burn marks on his clothes and face which made Naruto sweat drop. Honestly dad can you go one day without making another one of your inventions and blowing up the lab? I'd rather not explain to mom why your remains are in a matchbox. Naruto asked with humor in his voice while said man laughs sheepishly and rubs the back of his head. So how did the test go? Kiska asked. We passed and my teammates are Makoto-chan and Yakumo-chan and our sensei is Yugo Uzuki. She was one of my bodyguards before you guys adopted me. Naruto answered getting a nod from the inventor. I see. So how are you coping with Injetsu and Ryujin Jaka? He asked his son who shrugged. Everything's going well. I'm learning how to use their sword styles which cope with their sealed form and shikais, he answered. I see. So did you learn any of their special moves yet? Kazuki asked Naruto who shook his head. Not yet. Injetsu's gonna teach me one of his techniques while I continue to train and since I activated Ryujin Jaka's shikai yesterday, I'm learning how to control his flames before learning any of his techniques so that I don't end up harming my teammates or causing unneeded damage, he said and Kazuki nodded in agreement. That's good to hear. Injetsu's techniques will more than likely be the best ones to learn first before moving on to Ryujin Jaka's since I need to learn how to control the flames it releases in Shikai since I almost burned a fraction of the forest down. Naruto explained and got a nod from Kazuki. Well I'm gonna head down to the training camp to work on my techniques for a while have fun with whatever it is you're inventing. Naruto said as he headed out of the laboratory while the mad genius got back to working on his secret project. As Naruto towards the door that lead to the training ground a black blur aka Yoruichi leapt onto his shoulder. Naruto smiled and stroked her behind the ear, getting a purr from her. Hello mom. He said as she leapt off his shoulder and morphed into her human form with a Cheshire grin on her face. Hello to you too Sochi, she said, congratulations on the new team. Thanks. Say would you like to be my sparring partner for a while? I need to work some more on my hand to hand skills. Naruto asked while the Shihoin heiress nodded. I'd love to. I need to see how far you've gotten in your hand to hand skills and your shunpo level, she said as they headed into the training room. Meanwhile, an excited Rock Lee was sprinting towards the Namikaze estates since he heard that his best friend, rival, had not only become rookie of the year but he's officially a shinobi and on a squad. But what excited him even more was that there was a rumor going around that Naruto had fought and killed one of the academy instructors who turned traitor and several chunin and some janin that were gonna aid said traitor and Naruto took them down without even trying. He knew his rival was skilled but to pull that off amazing but then again he knew from his spars with Naruto that the last Namikaze was skilled but like him he gained his power through hard work and was hopping to spar with the blonde. As he was pondering on his thoughts, he was unaware that he was gonna crash into Kenpachi and fall on the ground rubbing his throbbing head. Ow. Sorry about that sir I was in a hurry, he tried to explain but then the words died in his throat and his mouth hung open due to the fact that he was staring at the imposing figure of Kenpachi. Said man turned around to green clad ninja and raised the edge of his brow. A. Hey, you should really watch where you're going kid. He said as he reached out and lifted Lee off the ground and back on his feet. Where are you off to in such a hurry? Kenpachi asked. Lee managed to snap out of his stupor and speak up. Oh I'm sorry sir. My name is Rock Lee and I was just about to meet my friend Naruto. I was gonna congratulate him in becoming the rookie of the year with his age group and beginning his shinobi career. The big browed shinobi stated. How do you know my nephew? Kenpachi asked which made Lee gawk. And nephew? Oh wait Naruto told me that he was adopted by people. So you must be his uncle correct? Lee asked. Yeah I'm the Gaki's uncle, he said and started to walk away from a confused Lee until he spoke up again. Oi, are you coming or what? Kenpachi asked Lee who nodded instantly and went after Kenpachi. With Naruto and Yoruichi Naruto just shunpoed on a rock ledge wearing his sleeveless muscle shirt and black pants wearing a pair of martial arts shoes and was scanning the area with his eyes. When that didn't work, he closed his eyes and focused on increasing his hearing and sense of smell since Yoruichi always suppressed her riatsu. As he remained focused Yoruichi appeared behind him in her onmitsukido outfit on with her right fist cocked back and swung it at the back of his head. Naruto's eyes snapped open and he instantly vanished while her attack reduced the rock texture to rubble. Said blonde landed on the ground. Man ka san are you evaluating my skill level or are you trying to cave my skull in? Naruto asked while she landed on the ground and smiled. 
oh come now Sochi would I do something like that? She asked innocently while he scoffed and got into a fighting stance. The two of them vanished once again and their kicks made contact with their ankles and they vanished again. When they reappeared again, they released a series of punches and kicks that only made contact with each other's fists, feet, elbows, shins, and heels. They once again landed back on the ground and vanished once again. Punches and kicks echoed throughout the training ground and trees and rocks were shattered upon the impact of their physical attacks and two black blurs were zipping around the area causing even more destruction. While the two flash warriors were sparring, Kenpachi and Lee entered the training grounds and said Taijutsu user was gawking at the site and was wondering how this place was created under the mansion. Pretty impressive huh kid? Kenpachi asked Lee who just nodded his head. That was when the two blurs were seen clashing and separating simultaneously. Looks like Yoruichi and Naruto are doing their daily spar, he said while Lee's eyes bugged out. T that's Naruto out there moving at that speed? Lee asked the mountain of muscle. He knew Naruto was fast especially when they spared but the speed he's moving at now is similar to his senseis when he wears his weights. Yep. That's him and his mom zipping around our there and causing all that damage. Though it's nowhere close to the amount of damage he and I usually cause in our spars. He stated while Lee just stared at the scene in awe. That was when an explosion of dust rose and Naruto leapt out of the explosion and skidded across the ground for a few seconds until he came to a halt. A bit of blood was dripping from his lip and he wiped it off. He was about to leap back in there but he paused and saw someone clad in green calling his name and waving at him. What the? He squinted his eyes to see who it was. Is that Lee Gua? He asked himself that was cut off by Yoruichi's foot slamming into his face and sending him flying and skipping across the terrain and then crashing into a rock pillar. Yoruichi landed in the spot he was formerly at and smirks. Now Naruto-kun what have I told you about taking your eyes off the enemy? She said in mock disappointment while wagging her index finger. That was when a beam of blue-white lightning shot at her from the rubble and she leapt into the air in order to dodge it. That was when Naruto appeared in front of her with blood running down the side of his face with his fist reared back and swung it at her face. It ascended towards her in slow motion and just as it was about to make contact she instantly shunpoed away and suddenly appears near Lee and Kenpachi. She rubbed her cheek to see some blood smeared on her knuckles and smiles. He's getting better in anticipating my movements. She commented while said blonde appeared and looked at Lee. Hey Lee what brings you to my place? Are you looking for a spar? The young Namikaze asked the fuzzy browed spandex wearer who snapped out of his stupor. Actually I came here to congratulate you on becoming the rookie of the year and I heard that you dealt with a group of traders that were Chunin and Junin ranked. He stated which made Naruto raise an eyebrow. Uh thanks and yeah I dealt with some traders but they got themselves killed for underestimating me and stealing the forbidden scroll. He answered. I see. So you're Naruto's mother correct? Lee asked Yoruichi who nodded and then raised an eyebrow when he bowed his head. It's an honor to meet you ma'am, he replied while she smiled. Why thank you but there's no need to be so formal to me young man, she said while he looked up and nodded. Well it's getting late Lee and I have to meet my team tomorrow for our first mission. If you want to spar bro just head over here but whatever you do stay away from my aunt Kukaku especially when she has her day long hangovers or else you find yourself getting a firecracker shoved in a place that doesn't get that much sunlight, he stated which made the boy pale. Why you mean the scary lady in the living room is your aunt? Lee asked with dread and Naruto nodded. Yeah but she's really not that bad once you get past her psychotic streak and love for explosions, he stated which made Yoruichi chuckle and Kenpachi to snort. Anyhow come on Lee I'll show you out since I don't want you getting lost and caught in any of my dad's traps. He said motioning Lee to follow him to the exit. The next day Naruto was walking into Team Sixa training grounds and saw Makoto and Yukumo. Good morning ladies. Naruto called out lifting his hat from his head and greeting them. Said girls saw him and smiled back. Good morning Naruto-kun. They both said at the same time as he approached them. That was when Yugo appeared before her stundant. Good morning sensei. The three greeted while Yugo smiled at them. Good morning you three. I have some very good news for you all. Apparently the Hokage believes that this genin squad is qualified to perform C-ranked missions outside the village due to my report on your teamwork skills, she said which made their eyes widen in surprise. We're going start on C-ranked missions already. Yukumo asked and got a nod from Yugo. Yes but that is only if you three think you're ready. 
I don't want you to be pressured in taking higher ranking missions unless you think you guys are prepared for them. She assured them while they thought about it for a few seconds. I'm ready. Makoto said with confidence and determination in her voice. Me too. Yukumo stated and they looked at Naruto who just grinned. You already know my answer ladies. Naruto stated and Yugo I smiled. Excellent now meet me to the Hokage Tower. She said and shunshins away while Naruto wraps an arm around Makoto and Yukumo's shoulder and shun pose to the tower. Hokage Tower Tsunade was in her office finishing setting up missions and that was when Yugo and her team appeared in the office and she looked up and smiled. So you three decided to go on ahead and start on the C rank mission huh? She asked Yugo who nodded. Aruka, who happened to be in the room eyes widened in shock and disbelief when he heard this. Wait a minute. C rank missions? Hokage-sama are you sure that's wise? He asked only to get a glare from the female Hokage. Are you questioning my judgment Chunin? She asked in a dangerous tone that Mon the scarred man gulp. And no it's not that Hokage-sama I was merely worried about them being ready to take on higher ranking missions since their newly graduated genin and assumed that they would start off with D ranks to improve their teamwork. The academy instructor replied and was a little unnerved at her glare and didn't want to be punched into the hospital. Naruto decided to speak up and save Iruka from a one-on-one -on -one session with his godmother's fist. Iruka sensei I understand you're worried about us but we're ninja now. We're no longer kids training in the academy and we know what our careers entitle us to do. Keeping us safe behind the village walls will not prepare us for the true hardships of our jobs and as for our teamwork. I trust Makoto and Yukumo with my life and they trust me with theirs, plus our sensei happens to be a former member of Anbu ninja who are considered the best in the village and take on the most dangerous missions and are also the bodyguards of the hokage so i'm pretty sure we'll be fine since makoto here is not only highly adept in using fire jutsu due to her clan's affinity to it as well as making traps plus she has a fully matured sharingan like her big brother does and yukumo is highly skilled in genjutsu due to her being born with a strong form of their keke jenke and she's a good sensor he finished while the man remained stumped Tsunade coughed and spoke up after her godson finished. Naruto is right Aruka and these three are more than ready to take on the C-ranked missions and are without a doubt the strongest team of this year, plus should they happen to run into a situation that is out of Yugo's hands then I'm positive Naruto can handle it, she said. Tsunade then looked through the C-ranked files and pulled out one for an escort mission. Well then let's start you off with an escort mission. You four will be escorting a bridge builder by the name of Tazuna back to Wave Country so that he can finish completing the bridge in order to connect Wave Country to the mainland and you are to deal with any bandits. She stated and then she snapped her fingers which caused the door to be opened by an Anbu and entering the room was a drunken old man who seemed to be in his fifties. Huh. This is my protection. I paid good money to get three females and a blonde brat wearing a bucket hat who looks like a wannabe samurai. He said in a drunken fashion and was unaware of the dark auras emitting off of Yukumo and Makoto while Yugo who had a calm and blank expression right hand twitched. TCH. I feel safe already. He said and would have ranted on until a flash of silver cut the sake bottle he had in half and it fell to the floor. He looked up to see Naruto with Injetsu halfway drawn and saw the piercing gaze Naruto gave him under his hat which slightly unnerved him. Well would you look at that. I was aiming for his arm but due to the stench that's emitting from his body I missed. Naruto said sheathing his blade while Tazuna started to sweat a little. And old man I suggest you apologize to my teammates and sensei before they give you a reason to fear Kunoichi. Tazuna saw Makoto with her Sharingan activated while the shadow of an evil demon formed behind Yukumo and Yugo was, sharpening her blade with a smooth stone which made Aruka sweat drop. I I'm sorry. Please don't kill me, he said meekly. Apology accepted. Yugo said placing a hand on top of Yukumo and Makoto's head and the two huffed and still glared at Tazuna. Just be sure to pick your words carefully next time Tazuna-san because my students are more than capable of protecting you and insulting them would not be beneficial to your health. Tazuna gulped and nodded his head slowly. Okay but I expect you to protect me with your lives. I am the client after all, he said. Of course. All right you three. Head back to your homes and be sure to pack enough supplies for this trip. We'll meet at the main gate in two hours, she says getting a nod from them and they left the office to get their things. Konoha main gate Yugo was at the main gate with her backpack and gear with Tazuna. That was when they saw Naruto approach them with Mikoto and Yukumo behind him. 
Makoto appeared to be wearing arm guards, shin guards, and a silver anbu vest with her outfit and strapped to her back was a ninjutsu. Yukumo was wearing the same type as well only they were black and also had a ninjutsu strapped to her back. They too Kunoichi also had backpacks as did Naruto who also had a large scroll attached to his backpack. They also had extra weapons pouches strapped to their belts. Yugoa raised an eyebrow at this as they looked like they were preparing to go to war. Tazuna on the other hand whistled in amazement as he saw this. I guess they really aren't cocky brats, he said to himself while Yugo smirks. Hey you old drunk. I see you've decided to get rid of the booze smell while we were getting ready. Naruto stated which made the man's brow twitch. Shut it blondie. I'm not old, he growled out. Naruto raised an eyebrow and blinks a few times. Do you have any grandchildren? He asked Tizune who nodded. Then you're old. Tizuna's shoulders slump and muttered about disrespectful gakis while Makoto and Yukumo giggled. Twenty minutes later teams six were on a dirt road towards wave country. Naruto was in front of Tizuna while Makoto was guarding the man's left and Yukumo was guarding the right and Yugo was covering the rear. Makoto was occasionally glancing at Tizuna who was looking like a nervous wreck. Tizuna-san. She spoke up, snapping the man out of his stupor. Are you feeling okay? You've been acting angsty since we left the village. Said bridge builder rubbed the back of his head and smiled nervously. Oh it's nothing for you to fret over. I'm just worried about running into bandits that's all. He assured the female Uchiha who narrowed her eyes at the man but then they returned to normal if you say so. She said but she could already tell that the man was lying for some reason. While bandits are an issue they aren't that dangerous unless in a large group so what would he have to be afraid of? Itachi taught her how to read a person's psyche by analyzing their body language and was positive that Tazuna was hiding something but the question is what was it? Meanwhile Naruto saw a puddle lying under a nearby tree and smirks. You've got to be kidding. It hasn't rained for the past week and the genjutsu is C-ranked. He thought and a gleam appeared in his eyes. He slipped his hand in the sleeve of his green jacket and pulled out what appeared to be a small gray cube. Let's see just how much of a wallop Kukaku Oba-chan's explosive cubes pack, he said as he slowly tossed the cube into the puddle and continued to walk by it. Yukumo already sensed the genjutsu and turned her head to Yugo who slowly shook her head telling her to keep moving. Once they all passed the puddle Naruto tilted his hat down and smirks. Boom. Was all he said and that was when an explosion occurred where the puddle was and jumping out from it the explosion were two nin who wore cloaks, breathing masks on their faces, and had on kiri headbands with a slash mark on them and a single horn on the sides. One wore a gauntlet on his left arm and the other on his right and a chain made up of shurikens was connected to them. They were Gozu and Maizu, the Onikyodai no Kiri, the demon brothers of the mist, and they were covered in burns. Kill them. They both said at the same time and charged at the group. Makoto. Yugo called out while the Uchiha nodded. She pulled out a kanai and threw it at the chained weapon. When it made contact, it pinned the chain into a tree making the brothers jerk back into place. Damn it. They both called out and broke the link with the chain from their gauntlets and charged the group once again. Makoto charged towards Gozu with her Sharingan activated and had her right hand wrapped around the hilt of her ninjutsu. Gozu swung his gauntlet at her head but she tucked and rolled under the claws and twists her body she instantly drew her ninjutsu and slashed him across the back. Gozu's eyes widened in shock but the he dissipated into water making her eyes widened. A Mizu Bunshin, water clone, crap. She cried as she narrowly dodged having her head lopped off by a pair of claws courtesy to Gozu. Nice try little girl. He taunted and kicked her in the torso, sending her flying and hitting the ground. She groaned and shook the cobwebs out of her head but gasped in pain due to the fact that Gozu plunged his claws into her chest while he had a look of glee in his eyes. She coughed up blood and smiled weakly and morphed into a flock of crows. That scattered everywhere. What is Tigua? He cried out due to the fact that Makoto's blade went through his back and out of his torso. You should know better than to look an Uchiha in the eyes fool. She said behind his back and pulled her weapon out while he staggered forward. You, you. He growled out and was about to turn around and attack only for the last thing he saw was Makoto's cold expression and her blade stabbing him right between the eyes. A look of horror formed on Maizu's face when he saw his brother get slain by the female Uchiha. Brother, he cried out and instantly saw red. As Makoto pulled her blade out of his skull her shinobi senses kicked in and she barely avoided a claw strike and saw hatred and rage fill Maizu's eyes. 
You I'll rip you apart, he roared. That was when a flash of silver lopped off his arm and now Maizu was howling in agony and clutching his now bleeding stump. Naruto appeared in front of a bewildered Makoto. Maizu looked up at the blonde wearing the bucket hat and a katana in his hand. Before he could do anything he was knocked out by a blow to the head courtesy of Yugoa Azuki. The Demon Brothers, their C-class Chunin from Kiri wanted for joining in a coup against the Mizukage, she said pulling out some rope and started to tie up the missing nin. Makoto saw the dead body of Gozu and saw blood and brain matter ooze out of his skull. Erp. Makoto dropped her ninjutsu and ran to the bushes and started to lose her lunch. Naruto sighs when he saw this and looked at Gozu's body. With a swift swing of his blade he cut the head cleanly off and the destroyed the body with a katan jutsu. He then pulls out a scroll and seals the head into it. Yukumo had placed her hand on the ground and seemed to be concentrating since her eyes were closed due to the fact that she was sending pulses of chakra into the ground. After doing that for a few minutes, she stood back up. Sensei I don't sense any other chakra signatures in the area. She said and got a nod from the woman who finished trying up Maizu. Makoto was currently throwing up in the bushes and was panting a little trying to get the image of a dead Gozu out of her head. Naruto appeared beside her, crouched down, and gently rubbed her back. Breathe slowly Makoto-chan. Naruto said in a soothing tone. Makoto looked at Naruto and nodded. She covered her mouth instantly, turned her head to the bushes again and threw up while Naruto continued to gently rub her back. Yukumo saw this and looked at her sensei who nodded, telling her to go check on her teammate and Yukumo ran off to where Naruto and Makoto were. She then turned her attention towards Tizuna and narrowed her eyes at the man. Tizuna-san. Yugao said getting the man's attention. We need to talk. The man gulped at her tone because it sounded harsh and dangerous. Meanwhile Yukumo pulled a water bottle out of her pack and handed it Makoto to took it and started to drink the water out of it in order to hydrate herself. Naruto went to go retrieve her blade and wiped the blood and brain matter off with a cloth and went to go give it back to her. Tizuna-san you better start explaining why we were recently attacked by Chunin level missing Nin and why they were targeting you. She asked glaring at the now frightened man. This was supposed to be a C-rank mission to escort you back to Wave Country. Did you lie about the mission's rank? I, I, sigh. Look I had no other choice but to lie about it but I have a good reason for doing it. He said while she remained silent and let him explain himself. You see Wave Country doesn't have enough money to pay for a higher ranked mission otherwise we'd end up being broke and Konoha was our only option. He said while Yukumo, Makoto and Naruto walked back to their sensei and Tazuna. How is that possible? Wave Country should be a prospering country due to its fishing ports and trading routes. How can it not pay for a higher ranked mission? Yugo asked. It's because of a man named Gado. Tazuna answered getting a raised brow from Yugo. Gado. You mean the man who owns one of the most major shipping shipping corps? In the elementals? What does he have to do with this? She asked and Tazuna started to explain how the man was also a part of the criminal underworld syndicate and was responsible for the smuggling of illegal drugs and other criminal activity and explained how he had taken over wave and was ing the country dry of supplies and also cutting off trade routes and keeping ships from sending them the resources they need in order to survive. So you see? Gato has a price on my head and that bridge is our last hope in getting our country up and going once again. If I'm killed then how will the bridge be built? Please I'm begging you. Help me stop Gato and save my home country. I swear that if you help me accomplish this I'll pay double for the mission. My family and friends are all depending on me and I can't let them down so please will you help me? He begged. Naruto looked in the man's eyes and spoke up. He's telling the truth sensei so what should we do? He asked while Yugoa though about it and sighed. Originally I would have to cancel the mission and head back to Konoha. She said making the man look down. But I think an exception can be made about this if you agree to fully pay for the A rank mission once wave is up and running once again. She finished causing Tazuna to look back up. Now then all I need to do is send a message to the Hokage so that she can send a support team to help us since I'm pretty sure Gato will send a Janin level Nin to deal with us. She said. Naruto on the other hand grins. Leave that to me sensei. Naruto said biting his thumb and performing a few hand seals and plants his hands on the ground. Kachiyose no jutsu, summoning jutsu, he said in a puff of smoke surrounded Naruto's hand. 
when it cleared a small orange toad with blue markings around his eyes and lips and also wears a blue vest appeared on the ground causing Yugo's eyes to widen when she saw her student summon a toad which meant that Jiraiya let Naruto sign the toad contract which would make sense since his father was a former summoner of the powerful toad clan. Yo! Gamakichi said waving his webbed hand at the group. Kaya! Makoto shrieked and suddenly latched onto Yakumo who almost stumbled over which made the others sweat drop. Kichi blinks and looks at Naruto. What's her deal bro? Kichi asked Naruto and Makoto's eyes bug out. It talks. Frogs don't talk. She stated while Yukumo struggled to pry her off. Said Toad had a tick mark on his head. Hey I am Toad not a frog, he yelled at the girl. Ah don't let it touch me I'll get warts. She cried out wrapping her arms and legs around Yukumo who was struggling. Okay. Naruto said with a huge sweat drop on his face. Anyway Kichi I need you to tell my godmother who is the Hokage that Team 6 needs a backup squad to assist them on a C now turned to rank mission. He instructed. Sure but what's in it for me? The toad asked and Naruto pulled out two blue bags. The one with the polka dots has candy in it and the other one with the stars on it has the slime explosives that you can use on your brother. He said and Gamakichi grinned. Sweet. He said and took the bags. I'll inform her right away. Yane. He then puffs away in a puff of smoke. Makoto get off of me. Yakumo screamed out while said Uchiha was clinging onto her like a lifeline. Naruto turned his head and sighs. This is gonna be a long mission. He muttered. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.